Hey, looks like it worked. I think we're back. This is the fifth chapter in the Endless Beekman live stream. Hey, is that Nicole? I think that's Nicole. And I see Nicole in the comment section. Good morning, Nicole. Nicole. You know what? I'm a little disappointed nobody brought me my tea yet. Let's see. It's 7.48. I mean, isn't anybody going by... Uh, Stewards this morning can grab me a cup of tea. I'm sure everybody's I'm sure everybody's still just getting ready for the day. <clears throat> Let's see. There, yeah, there's a better better angle. Okay. Oh, hey, Marianne James, how are you? Let's see. Is, are people finding? Did, oh, I think people might find it. Hey there, it's Josh. Who's this? Hey Josh, how are you? It's Dave McCormick from Pro Kitchen Gear in Wilmington, Delaware. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> Good. How are you? I was watching you until about 12.30 this morning and then finally had to cut out and go to sleep. But I did get an order in last night with you guys, so. Oh, you did? What name did you put it under? I put it under my name. I think I'm pretty sure it's under my name. Is yeah, it? it's under my name. Okay, I'm going to see how there, where it is. Okay. Your order has been packaged. It has not been labeled yet, but it's been packaged. You guys packed it already? You guys are better than we are. No, oh my god. No, they've been I'm telling you all night long. We we work real time now because well, I mean, you know, you ship a bunch you you've got a business too. Yeah. And this time of year it's people wait till the last minute to get their orders in, so we're working in real time getting getting them out. Oh, I know. We have we have an enormous amount of people that are paying an enormous amount of money for overnight shipping. It is <laughs> insane. I know. It, we're a little handicapped here because we don't we can't have overnight shipping because we're we're a little bit too remote. Right, 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 right. Yeah. So people got to plan a little better today. I don't know what your schedule is, but today for us, this is the last day to order if you live west of the Mississippi. This is it. Yeah. So all of our ground orders. Because we can do expedited and overnight all of our ground orders this last day for West of Mississippi. And then uh, this is when we'll start seeing a big uptick in the, um, the overnight and expedited orders for, for all those people that waited to the very last minute. Exactly, exactly. And, you know, we usually, I don't know about you, but if, if we get, I shouldn't say this, but if we get late orders that we don't think are going to make it, we sometimes bump them up for the, you know, bump up the postage at our own expense to make sure they get there in time. Oh yeah, we'll do that too. We'll we'll do everything in our power to get them out, and we'll take a look in the beginning of the day and take a look at all the orders in the queue and see which ones we have to kind of pick out and manage uh, a little bit separately. But we'll ship stuff, you know, yeah. outside of uh, the continental United States. So sometimes we have to look at they going to Puerto Rico, they going to Hawaii, you know, and make sure that you know we're we're addressing those people's needs appropriately because yeah, we want to make sure they have everything, you know. It's we Christmas. Can we get that, um, you know, like any small business, we, we get a lot of complaints and sometimes it hurts our feelings. We get a lot of complaints about the shipping prices. And um, what people don't realize is that, you know, they, they compare us to compare us to Target or to Macy's.com or to Amazon, you know, and all the free shipping and all that. Well, what they don't realize is that Amazon negotiates, you know, these big companies, they negotiate such great deals with the carrier services that then it's the little, the little small businesses that wind up having to make the profit for the carriers. Yeah, and that's and that's one of the reasons why we got. I, I, I'm sure I, I might have talked and talked to Fran about this at some point too, um, about how we got so involved with Amazon, where we're letting them do some of our fulfillment for us because of the people that are waiting to the last minute and are using their Prime accounts <laughs> because they have two-day free shipping. We ship a lot of products to Amazon and they fulfill for us because it's just too expensive yeah. for us to offer the next day or two-day shipping at the same cost that they're offering it and still be able to make somewhat of a profit. Yeah, you know, so if you can't beat them, join them. <laughs> well, we join them, all right. We're laying in bed with them. <laughs> <laughs> all right, give your website again for people. All right, it's www prokitchengear.com and since we are in bed with Amazon that means that they can come to our website and actually use their Prime account to get two day free shipping directly from our website. 
Oh, really? Right from your website? Yep. Yep. We uh, we changed our website over around uh, the end of the summer. Uh, so we're on an Amazon Web Store platform now, and we are able to, any of our products are at Amazon Warehouses. If you have an Amazon account, you can actually log in with your Amazon account onto our website and get the free two-day shipping just as you would with Amazon. Wow, I, we might have to try that. I think I, we, were, we were definitely going to get stuff up on Amazon next year because, really, I know people have such a thing against Amazon sometimes, but, you know, for small businesses, they actually do help in a lot of ways in fulfillment and stuff. So that's one of our projects for next year is to get, to get some yeah, more stuff. Yeah, I will stuff. tell you from my experience, it blew my mind. We were alive for probably two hours. We started with them about 18 months ago. Yeah. We were alive for two hours and had our first order, and we could not believe. I can't even begin to tell you. It, it's blown away all my expectations. And I had talked to Brent a little bit. I'll probably come up uh, sometime in the beginning of, of the new year to come visit, um, and I can give you all the ins and outs of it, too. I can give you all my experiences with it. Oh, that would be that would be great. We'd, we'd love that because... Um yeah, we've got we've got a lot of new products coming ne out next year, and, and I think we, you know we need to do that. So okay, I'm telling people one right. more time: ProKitchenGear.com, right? Yes, absolutely. And you absolutely. You, you have amazing stuff. You give you gave us a nice package. Um, yes. Coming home, I love the mason. You had the mason jar with the lid. Oh, uh, the mason shaker! Oh my gosh, that mason shaker by WMP Design out of Brooklyn. That thing we sold 150 in 24 hours this weekend. You are kidding. No, it's one of our top selling products because it's so cool. It's you know, just a mason jar with a shaker top. And actually, I was using it last night to make uh, old fashions when I was watching you guys. Oh, my God, that's hilarious. Okay, wait. What, is, what does this say? That. Can you see what? Or no, there's a delay on the box. What does this box say? I'm holding up. It says David McCormick. Oh, oh there it is. I see it. Pro Kitchen <laughs> Gear. That's, there it is. Going to our warehouse. It's it's on, going to your on your way. All right. Thank you, boys. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Good luck with the rest of the season. All right. You too. Happy holidays, guys. I'll talk to you guys soon. All right. Bye, David. All right. Bye. All righty. Let's see. Is that Dave on the phone? Oh, yeah. Hey, Nicole. That's Yeah, that was Dave. Dave from Pro Kitchen Gear. So you did see him. Kristen Phillips. Hot lemon tea with Manuka honey. Well, we've got our own honey, but, but Manuka would be good too. I'd just be happy for the tea right now. Um, I know. Lori W., I watched last night, and your phone sounds like mine, and I kept thinking my phone was ringing. I, you know, I took a, a short two-hour break, and I, I tried to lay down, and all I could hear was the phone ringing in my head the whole time. I watched around six and checked in at four a.m. when Josh was reading us to sleep. I, oh yeah, hey, hey, uh, Jenny, you uh, called when you were feeding the stove. Oh, thank you, Ananda Lynn, Lynn Ananda. I appreciate the fact that you guys have free shipping on orders one hundred and fifty dollars and up. Yes, thank you. That, that actually costs us money, so we appreciate that. You appreciate it. All right, hello. Is this David? No, this is Sharon. Oh, is David your husband or other? Oh, no, he's my brother-in-law. Oh, your brother-in-law. Okay, so you're just using his phone. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a nice brother-in-law. Who is this? This is Sharon. Um, we've, I've, we've been to all the harvest festivals, and I met you in... Uh, Casanova one time last last winter. Oh great! Where where are you calling from today? Um, Rochester. Do you have snow? There's a, quite a bit of snow coming down here. Yes, we do. Uh, okay, give me the weather report because I'm I'm stuck here. I haven't seen any weather. What's what are we expecting today? Oh, uh, we're supposed to get about eight inches. You're kidding. Yeah. I I'm not this. kidding. No, seriously, no. We had snow overnight, and it wasn't as cold as you were, but... Oh, oh. my gosh. Oh, my God. Wouldn't that be terrible if I, if I were here for 24 hours and then get snowed in here? <laughs> <laughs> You'll make it up the hill. No problem. <laughs> All right. What are you going to do today? 
go. I was going to go see my sister-in-law, but now with this now, I think I'll stay home and make cookies. Oh, well, I was cookies. making cookies last night while I was watching you, and then I fell asleep. Oh. And I woke up again, and then I fell asleep to the sound of the tape guns. Oh, what um, what kind of cookies did you make? I made the fig cookies. What kind? The Italian fig cookies. Oh, the fig cookie cookies? Yeah. Oh, I don't those have to are... say it in the Italian name. Yeah, those are big Italian things. Those are tremendous. Did you make any pizzelles yet this year? No, but I, maybe today. Maybe I'll get out the old iron. Yeah, those are so much fun to make, aren't they? They are. They're very instant gratification. They what? They're instant gratification. They are. They're done. Like, yeah, you, and you, you don't have to wait for them to come out of the oven. They're there. And they're yep. just, and they're, and you they can pile make, up really fast. Yeah, they're, they're like making waffles or pancakes or anything. You're just like, oh, they're done. They're great. They're there. There's more. There's more. Yeah. Do you do any any other kind of um, flavor of Pizzelle or just a traditional one? I like the anise flavor. Yeah. 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 Um. And then just vanilla is good too, just plain. Yeah, just the plain. Have you ever done like a sandwich thing with the pizzelles? No. There's um. I haven't. Because there's a Dutch cookie called a stroop stroof waffle, um, which we sold last year, but we had to stop selling them because they didn't ship well. They you know they broke when they shipped, but they were a very thin waffle cookie like uh, like a pizzelle, and then in the middle. You, while it's still warm, you spread honey, and then you, you put two of them together. Oh, that sounds good. Yeah, a very, very thin layer of it, not a thick layer. Either either honey or caramel between the two layers. I, and I so, have some of your honey still, so maybe yeah. we could try some of that. Yeah, if you on your vanilla, when you do the vanilla pizzelles, oh, try this because I want to know if it's good. Um, so do the vanilla pizzelles, and then if you have the cinnamon or the ginger or the vanilla honey, do a thin layer in between. I'll give it a try. And then what they do with it, I don't know if people do this with, well, no, because pizzelles and stuff, but um, in the Scandinavian countries with the Stroop waffles, they take their cup of coffee or, or tea or whatever, and they put um, they put this, the cookie on top with the with the honey in the middle, and it and the steam softens the whole thing. Ooh, that sounds good. Doesn't that sound good? Yeah. Did you get your tea yet? No, I did not get the tea yet. <laughs> I don't, I don't know why I don't I don't think this it's it's snowing pretty bad so I don't want anybody to go out if they don't have to go out but yeah I think somebody maybe maybe one of our second ship people will bring one down I bet somebody will I, I'm sure someone will I mean did you see all the food we got last night yes I did oh my gosh we got we got hummus and olives and cheese and pita and then we got all the sweets and then we got those rice balls did you see rosemary last night yes I did. Yep, that was great. Oh my gosh, wasn't uh, her treats were amazing? Yeah, and I saw Garth and Doug showed up. Yeah, I'm and I, I'm pretty sure Farmer John's gonna come by today. Oh, that'd be nice. Yeah, always good yeah. to see him. All right, I will let you go. Have a good day. You too. Keep watching. Stay alive, no matter what occurs. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Talk to you. Talk okay. To you later. Bye. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. All right, so it's morning. The sun has come up. Um, we're we're still live. We're here. We're stopping there. You can hear the tape machine going in the background. Tape machine. By tape machine, I mean Brian and Brent. So they're packing up the orders. Today, last day to order if you live west of the Mississippi. If you live west of the Mississippi and you order tomorrow, we can't recommend that it's that because we don't think it's going to ship to where you are. The, for, for this time of year, trying to get a package to the West Coast, it just takes so much time. Anything west of the Mississippi. And for that matter, if you are if you live east of the Mississippi and you're thinking about order something, get it today so we can get it out. I can already see snow, lots of snow coming down. That can affect the, sh the shipping. Um, let's see. Who's calling now? 917, that's New York. Hey there, who's this? Hi, this is Holly. Can who? I speak to Josh? Yeah, who did you say this is, Holly? This is. Hey there, this is Josh. You're on the air, even if you're watching. There's a delay in the in the feed, so 
We're live. Hey, Josh. I'm so sorry I missed the book signing in New York. Oh, I, well, I'm sure we'll so, do another Dan, one. But Andrew came by and he got you guys to do the book, and I'm enjoying making the recipes out of the Harlem cookbook. Oh, great. You got the dessert one. Yes. Well, what I have the other one. So I'm good. You know. <laughs> but I'm, I'm a big fan, so I've, we've got your books. And actually, I'm currently in Fort Worth on business, but my husband is watching the channel in our home in New York City. Oh, really? In New so York? so what, you're, one is in Texas, one's in New York? So, yep, yep, yep. Andrew is watching you on his uh, laptop computer in our home watching the snow come down, although it's not snowing very hard in New York City yet. No, no, just, you, people got to bring me up to date because I've been trapped here for the last, oh, God, how, however many hours. What Are we having a storm? Is this going to be a storm? Uh, they're saying it's going to be a couple of inches in the city, probably more up by you guys. Yeah, yeah, we always get we always get more. Yeah, it, it's coming down. I thought it would be too cold to snow, but apparently not. So my question for you is: So we've ordered, we've already had two fruitcakes arrive. We've got two more coming this week. Yeah. Uh, we we love to take it and just slice it in the morning and toast it. Yes. And have it with with coffee. But um, do you guys have any other uh, great things that you do with it? Well, actually, I, the toasting is a great idea. I'm glad you brought that up because you know regular regular fruit cake that you get has so much corn syrupy blech in it that you you can't toast it. It would just melt in your in your toaster. But because our fruit cake is an actual cake with fruit. It actually toasts really well, and that is one of the favorite ways. And with butter on it, you would never put butter on a regular fruit cake because there's so much, you know, fat in it. But um, this tastes great with butter. Um, have you tried in the first cookbook? I, I believe there's a, yeah, it's the first cookbook. There's a recipe for pork loin stuffed with gingerbread. So we have not. Okay, so go to that recipe. Skip the gingerbread. Use fruit cake. So. Excellent. Yes. That Excellent. Was, Although it seems it seems it seems like such a such a waste for such wonderful fruit cake. <laughs> I know. Well, yeah, actually, you're you're right. I wouldn't do it with our fruit cake. But if somebody gives you one of those cheap grocery store fruit cakes, you know, as a as a gift or something, or if somebody's you know is throwing them away, go ahead and take take one of the cheap ones and use that. As yeah, the ones the ones that people sent from Texas. <laughs> I know those Texas ones. Everybody buys them. They're not so good. Yeah, yeah, they're pretty terrible. Let me see. What other way can do you can you use the fruit cake, the fruit cake that you would like? Um, French toast. Oh yeah, French toast. You know, we we get a lot of um, this time of year. We get a lot of beautiful gifts from from friends and neighbors. You know, different breads and banana breads and apple breads and and, and fruit cakes and things. And uh, sometimes in the morning we will if and. It sounds weird, but if we want to be a little healthier and we feel like we need a little protein, we make French toast with the sweet breads. Cool. So you can. You that can, sounds wonderful. Yeah, definitely. You can try that with the fruit cake. All right. Well, hope to see you and Brent. I gotta get keep going. I gotta get to work. I know you're working. And you're so in business. Call in and say hello and happy holidays. And well, thank you, love and, you guys, and, and we wish you great, great, great success. Thank you. Said your your husband's watching now too. He is. Andrew is watching in New York City. He's probably buttering his fruit cake now that you gave him permission. Oh, I love it. We're we're connecting. We're connecting married people all over the world. <laughs> <laughs> all, right. all right. Have a great Merry day. Merry Christmas. Happy you, New Year. You too. Bye bye. Bye. Well, that was fun. That was so. She's already ordered two two four fruit cakes. She said. So four fruit cakes. To order more, Let, Brent, how many fruit cakes are left on the shelf? Sixteen. Sixteen fruit cakes left for the year. That's it. If you want a fruit cake, get it today. All right. Let's see who else. It looks like my comments froze. Um, so let me try to do this. See if I can get some more comments. This this is just like this is like a morning Today Show. Let me see what else. If this was the Today Show, we'd be talking only about celebrities. I'm sure Taylor Swift has done something or or hasn't done something. Um, 
Today's show, well, Good Morning America talks only about celebrities. Brent, give me some fake celebrity news. Who can we say was spotted at the Beekman last night? Brent's too tired to even come up with a celebrity. All right, taking a, taking a call. Hey, it's Josh, who's this? What, David or Phoebe? Phoebe would. Oh, Phoebe. Hey, Phoebe. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. What are you doing today? Um. Well, I'm just about to do mass. You're just about to what? Do mass. Mass? Yeah, mass. Oh, church, church mass? No, like mass as in like solving equations. Oh, like mass. Mass. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Phoebe. What, what kind of math are you doing? Um, we're doing algebra right now. Well, we just finished that, so we're doing geometry. And how's is it? How's it going? Is it easy for you? Um, geometry is fun. I like geometry. Oh, you like geometry? Jerry, you must be a very visual person. Um, yeah. Well, I'm an actress. So people say it's because I'm a creative person that geometry is easy. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, because you can envision. I was better at geometry, too, because um, you can envision what something is shaped like. You know what else I was good at? It's physics. Oh, yeah. I, I, I love physics and science and stuff. Yeah. I, was not good it, at, I wasn't good at chemistry or, or like, calculus. I, anything with formulas I wasn't good at, but physics and geometry I could do well. Yeah. I'm, I'm homeschooled, so I don't really do, like, um... With stuff with like pouring and chemicals, and because that's just so messy. And yeah, since I do your... all those science things in my kitchen, it's kind of not safe. Yeah, you don't want to burn, your, you don't want to burn your, your own house. I know where you cook. Um, so, do, where are you calling from again? I forget, Phoebe. I'm calling from Kansas City. Oh, that's right, Kansas City. And you don't have any snow today. Uh, I can't tell. It's pretty dark, but I don't think so. Oh, it's dark, so you're, the sun hasn't come up. I forget how much further east we are than you. Yeah, it's like 7-11 here, and, well, it's it's still really dark. I don't know why, but it's really dark. Well, you know what the shortest day of the year is? Uh, well, what day is it? I don't know. December 20th. Or is it really? the 21st? I think it's the Oh, wait, yeah, I do. I, I don't know. I guess I forgot. <laughs> yeah. So this is the way I look at it. Right after December 20th, it starts, the sun will come up earlier and go down later, and then pretty soon it's summer. Huh. Um, so are, I, well, now are you, are you going to be home? You've got classes and everything today you've got to do, right? Not classes. You're homeschooled, but you've got lessons you got to do today. Yep. I have lots of them. It's pretty fun because I can um, I can wake up and have breakfast and take a nice leisurely morning into math and then into everything else. But I've heard from my friends who go to regular school, they just have to like run from class to class. Yeah, no, I'm, homeschooling definitely has it has its advantages, and I bet I bet your parents are great teachers, aren't they? Yeah, they are. They are really good teachers. But you know, the best the best thing is that you're probably a great learner. Well, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, bet you are. I bet you're probably really interested in a lot of things, aren't you? Um, yeah, I yeah. am. That's what I have. That's what I have a here. huge. All right, I, if you I, you go, now you go back to your math. And go back to your breakfast, and then I will check in later or put a note on our Facebook. I want to know what all you're studying today. All right. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna answer some comments here. All right. All right. Talk to you later. Okay. All right. Talk to you later. You too. All right. We got a question. Nicole asks Josh after opening items like the honey or the drizzle. How long is it good for? Well, the honey is good for ever and ever and ever. Honey is the one food product that will never go bad. And even though we do add some flavorings to the honey, natural flavorings, you know, we use real rosemary, real vanilla, real ginger, um, because it's, it's so the percentage of the flavoring compared to the 
uh, honey, the honey preserves it forever. So honey will never go bad. You don't need to refrigerate it. You don't need to do anything. It's all it's all fine. The black drizzle. Black drizzle, how long is it good for after opening? When kept covered in the refrigerator, it's good, it's good for a year or more. Again, it's a, got a high sugar concentrate because it's it's a balsamic vinegar reduced with the figs and the elderberries, so high sugar. So a year or more in the refrigerator. It, again, it's, it's vinegar. It's concentrated vinegar with a high sugar content. Probably can't go bad. So those are those two things. Okay, we got Stephen Collins on the phone. Stephen Collins, hello. Oops, did you hang up? Who's this? Yep, hung up. I'm gonna be right back. I gotta blow, blow my nose. I've got a cold. I don't wanna blow my nose in front of you. Well, I mean, I, if you don't care, I don't care. But. I'm back. Hey, it's Josh. Who's this? Hi, Josh. My name is Debbie. I'm from Rochester, New York. Oh, hey, Debbie. We just had somebody else calling from Rochester. Oh, did you? Yeah. How's the snow? Cool beans. It's like uh, cold here. <laughs> I know. And you got, snow, you got snow coming down, right? Yeah, a little. Yeah. I have to tell you my funny story. Yeah? Yeah. I was... <laughs> I was listening to you last night, and then I opened a couple of other tabs on my computer, and I was on Facebook and checking my email and stuff, and um, I'm sitting there, and all of a sudden, phone starts to ring. So I look at my landline, and there's nobody on it, and I pick up my cell phone, and there's nobody on it, and the phone stops. So I'm like, okay, I'm losing my mind. So I go about my business, and I'm like, you know, we're doing other things around the house, getting ready for Christmas, and it starts again. Mm. So it just happened like three times, and I'm like, what in the name of God is going on? <laughs> the phone keeps ringing. So I go to my Facebook page, and I go, somebody call Ghost Hunters, uh. because obviously there's something wrong. My, there's a phone that does not exist, keeps ringing, because my two phones are in front of me. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's, you know, so people are giving me suggestions. Somebody left their phone. Call, call your friend's phone number. See if it rings in the house. I'm running around. I'm looking under furniture. I'm going crazy. People on Facebook are going, oh, I had a friend that, that passed away on Sunday. They're going, it's your friend calling. <laughs> I'm like, no, it's not. come to find out. I had the tab on the on your on your tab open but not up on my computer screen. Uh, so every time somebody was calling in on your phone, you would hear. I would hear it in my house. And I would <laughs> you thought you were going crazy. That's, that's so funny. I, uh, that's hilarious. And I love that all your Facebook friends were trying to help you out. Yeah, yeah. But I'm like, do this, do this. <laughs> I, I, took, I took two hours, about 4 o'clock last night. I, I went up right, just right up the street is, is Megan's house. Oh, Tony's here, and and I went up to Megan's house to lay down for two minutes, and uh, all I could hear was the phone ringing, the phantom phone. <laughs> I'm sure you've had it. I'm sure. I, oh my I, God, you you've been see, but, there forever. But Tony just came from the Black Cat. With the coffee. Oh, cool! Did he oh, bring God. you anything? It's, he, yes, he brought coffee, and it's the way the way I like it, which is a little milk and no sugar. A little milk and no sugar. Thank and a you mild so much. Yes. Oh, <laughs> what a blessing. How are you? How was your night? It's good. I got up early, but it was too cold to come out. It's like below zero and snowing outside. I know. Well, okay. Tony, you've been on the outside. I have not been on the outside. 
Um, I'm, I'm sorry, what's your name on the phone again? Oh, it's Debbie. I'll let you go and talk to Tony. I just had to tell you that. All okay. the help I got from my Facebook friends with the Phantom phone call. <laughs> I think that's hilarious. I'm going to tell that story all day. Have a great day. Be safe. Thanks. Be, Bye. You're going to be snow. Bye-bye. Okay, so you've been out You've been out in the real world. What's going on? What, what's, what's up, snow today? One to three years. Really? Wouldn't that be terrible if I were here for 24 hours and then got snowed in here? It would be, but I don't think three inches is going to snow anybody in an upstate New York. Here, she was saying last night, uh, the woman who just called that, uh, she had one of the, the tabs open on the, on the mm -hmm. computer, and all night long she would hear the phone ring and she'd get up and answer, and she went on Facebook <laughs> and she's like, there's something wrong with me. <laughs> and her Facebook friends are like, you know, like, oh, they think you're going crazy. And it was because she heard it. Oh, it's your phone. Yeah, so she just Got kept it. hearing the phone in the background. No, 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 I, I just said that, but I heard the phone yeah. ringing and I realized it was your phone ringing too. So did you sleep all right? Yes, 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 yes. I got up early. I was going to make you donuts. Yeah. I'm a little sleepy. Well, I went back to sleep. That's why. I looked at the nice. skylight and it was covered with snow and I said, okay. Where do you have skylights? In my carriage house. Oh, you do? Yeah. Wow, that's fancy. Mm -hmm. That's fancy for Sharon Springs, skylights. Yeah, and, and a, what we used to be a hay barn, so. Um, I've never been, I haven't been in your place. I don't think so. Yeah. Friend has. I'm going to invite myself over someday. You're invited. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever you have a minute. So when do you open? When's the cafe open? Um, actually, during the week we open for lunch. So it's oh, 11 yeah. to you, 3. You're not, okay, you don't but for breakfast. special friends, we do breakfast. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Especially those who stayed up all night. How's everybody? Who's how's, back there? Brent and Jay. Or Brent and the. Brent and Ryan are back there. Ryan. And Caroline is over making uh, black people. Oh, she As is. we speak. All right, everybody. Every, if anybody's order had black drizzle, I don't think we're holding. I think we have plenty. We have. I don't think we're. Well, not plenty, but we're close. We've got enough. So we've got another batch of black drizzle coming. Tony, how much black drizzle did we sell last year? Oh, my God. Am I allowed to say? I think you can say. Well, I can say it's over 10,000. Over 10,000 black drizzle. Black drizzle. Why? 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 This is the runaway best condiment by far. What is it about this? Um, it's you know what's amazing about it is it has it appeals to both sophisticated and simple tastes. It has a nice combination of. You just called me simple. <laughs> <laughs> I know you. <laughs> I said a combination. A combination. Um, what it is is a combination of both like sort of the sweet and sour that we all love. It has a bit of a kick to it, but not too much. Mm -hmm. um, the elderberries add a little bit more sweetness. Um, the figs add a sort of exotic touch, and it's just, you know, it's just an amazing product. I, it, it, we have so much, and, but the cafe stinks, so we make it early oh, like, in the morning. Oh, because you have to reduce the vinegar. We so. reduce the vinegar three times, so it's really triple distilled. And well, you, yeah. triple reduced, not triple distilled. reduced because. When you're reducing the vinegar, you're really getting rid of the the what's the in the steam, the, the acid and all that. So it's, yeah. it's got a real real pungent smell. And the cafe reeks. You can smell it out on the street. I, yeah. So if you're coming through Sharon Springs today and you smell <laughs> and you smell <laughs> something acrid, it's Tony. Um, well, we replaced Sharon Springs is famous for the smell sulfur. of sulfur That's in the true. summer, so we've added vinegar in the winter. But, it's just so once you boil a lot of the acidity out in the acidity in the water and the, in the steam out, what you're left with is really the sugars that are in the balsamic vinegar. It stays acid though. It stays yes, pretty acid. Course, it's vinegar, so you're yeah, it remains. Yeah. That's that's the whole trick. That's what's so special about yeah. it is that it remains uh, high acidity, so it has you know almost. Uh, you know, a forever shelf life. Of course, it doesn't last on the shelf, which seems to be our problem. But yeah. It's a good problem. We don't. Yeah, uh, forever shelf you know. life is not an issue with this. No. Um, in the label, of course, people like the label. Yes. Label's in the jar, good. a very expensive jar. Yes. <laughs> which you chose, I must say. <laughs> I, I did not choose this. Brent chose a jar. It's very pretty, but very hard to source. I don't think you, you, nobody else has this jar. I've never seen that on the shelf. No, um, I, I won't say where, where we get it from, but. Um, it takes forever to get to, doesn't it? We just we just got a big shipment yesterday, and we're hiding them. Yes. So and okay, so we're gonna we have plenty. Of course, we go through this like crazy. We gotta find. Well, we gotta. No, I was gonna say we need to find a way to wholesale, but I don't want to give it to other people. Okay. We're just okay. the rate we're selling it. I don't want more. I'm not complaining. Um. So what's on the agenda today? We're rolling some sugar plums. Because Ryan just told me we just ran out of sugar plums just at 6:30 this morning, All right. which is what gets me jumping out of bed in the morning. 
You see, oh, who, Deb, was, Deb was here last night, and we were talking about the POs and and how terrible we are. You are. <laughs> Well, it's true. Most, you know, most big companies, because we get, we're on that receiving end when big companies order, place an order from us. Yep. You know, they place it months in advance because that's how they plan. We don't, we we don't plan that well. We, it's, uh, but we also like to keep everything fresh. So, like the fruit cakes, we run the orders down the street. Tony bakes the fruit cakes. They're out. You know, they're made. Well, I don't personally bake them all. We have no, actually Caroline up. does. Well, you're being yeah. Caroline's Caroline does. She but, does. But t Tony and Caroline, we all do. We all have our part. And um, so they're kind of done the first day, so we keep the inventory really low, so everything goes out fast. The sugar plums, like Tony said, making the sugar plums today. They'll probably go out later today. If, right now, if you order sugar plums right now, Caroline is making them. They will go in the box. They will go out of the go out sometime afternoon. later this afternoon. But I should say one thing: um, the whole thing about POs and timing and all that. Um, having worked in the corporate world for a long time, it's something that's called just in time. Inventory and it is as long as you have good suppliers and good marketers, it can work very well together. Is that so, are we doing something? So you're right? doing something really doing sophisticated. Something. And you didn't oh know. Oh my God, we're doing something right. Oh come on, you're now you're a <laughs> hick. You, you didn't used to be a hick. We all became hicks. We moved up to Sharon Springs and we it's love true. it. We we all had illustrious careers. And we forgot. I know. But it's sort of still some of the some of the good stuff still sticks. Yeah, we still we still do some things right. But not the suits. <laughs> not the suits. Believe me. We don't have suits. We don't have meetings. No. Well, we know we have. We try to have a meeting every once in a while, but yeah, every two months. Yeah, yeah. They usually turn into gossip. Um, well, that's good. Th I thank you. Well, I'm gonna go back and. As back you can imagine, my throat is sore. Yes, you must be exhausted. Yeah. Enjoy. There's coffee for everybody inside. Oh, oh, they, oh, even you folks, if you can get over here. Oh, if you come, Tony's got extra coffee for you because it's not two, even for breakfast. Two whole pots. You come here, we'll give you coffee. All right, back to taking calls. Um, why, why do the comments, the comments don't load automatically here, I can't figure this, figure this out. Okay, give a call, I'm here, taking your calls. <laughs> okay, I'm trying to get, trying to get the comments up again. Oh, Lori, you got 18 inches of snow over the weekend, and you got more tomorrow. Oh my God, it's 32 to minus 32 in Montreal. Okay, it says makes leaving the house to go shopping very tricky. Well, Honey Bunny 181, you don't need to leave the house. You can order right from Beekman 1802 right at home. Shop Beekman1802.com. Um, again, okay. So the reason I I got to remind people why we're doing this video feed today. Um, we're doing a video feed because it is this is traditionally our busiest day of the year, and um, today is the last day for the west. Anybody west of the Mississippi, this is the last day for you to order for safe holiday delivery. So if you want something, get it in today. Um, east of the coast, and if you're east of the Mississippi, get that in today too. Okay, I think we, this is Stephen. Stephen calling now. Hey, is this Stephen? No, it's Kim. It's Kim. You know, I, I, I'm realizing I shouldn't be so chauvinistic. Every time a, a name comes up on the phone, I just say who it is. But that's right. <laughs> I know it's my husband. He's out here right now. Hey, Josh, I spoke with you a little bit earlier with my son, David. Yeah. I was hoping to get somebody in the back, but I can talk to you for just a quick moment. Yeah. I just put two orders through, two yeah. separate orders. Just checking to see if you can combine the two and ship them together. Oh, I'm sure we can. Hang on. I'm just going to give the phone right to Ryan, and he's going to take care of it. Excellent. And thanks so much for talking to my son this morning. I really appreciate it. Hey, did he finish his breakfast? No, he didn't. Oh, oh my God. My son David is, um, has uh, atypical autism. In fact, I, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but you guys really helped me out a few years ago with him because he had some eating issues. Yeah. And he loved your show. He absolutely loved it. And he saw the gardening that you were doing. We started our own little garden here. And he started sampling some of the vegetables. And I ordered some of your black teas. And he used that on a pizza and loved it. It was his first time eating anything but mozzarella cheese. And I remember. I remember. We didn't realize this, but when you have reached out, you are helping people in so many different ways. And we thank you so much. We're so grateful for that and everything you guys do. You guys do. Oh, that's so nice. I remember we've we've met and talked about that before, haven't we? 
Well, I sent you a note a while back. Oh, and yes. I think we sent some pictures along with his therapist. Um, that mm -hmm. showing the pizza that they made. Yes. And yes. Um, and we did we did get a note back from you, and we also received a note back from the Discovery people too. Oh, that's that very that's, nice. That is super sweet. Yeah, yeah. Oh. I just have I, it. Just it's it's amazing. Just the littlest things, like a television show. Not that your show is little, but um, you know how they can make an impact on him. It's it's. Even television commercials for restaurants. Well, so I'm going to try. It gets it in his mind. Hey, I want to try it. And yeah. I mean, we can fight him tooth and nail, and, and the therapist will work for him for months, and then all of a sudden, he he wants it. He wants to try it because it's something that Josh and Brent are doing. You know, it's well, just, we really appreciate it, and I hope to see you guys back on television again. Well, I'm, I'm we're, we're working on a couple of television things, but I want to say I, I want to say something. It may it may sound a, a little controversial, but I think that children on the autism spectrum are some of the most special, uh, interesting, unique, valuable human beings we have. And I, I completely agree with you. We meet a lot of, of children on the autism spectrum, and, and I find all of them fascinating and wonderful, and I'm so, I'm so proud every time I get to, to meet one of them and see their human difference. I, I think it's oh, that's, incredible. that's very sweet. Yes, he's our, our son is um, he is a special kid. He has a heart of gold, and he is a really loving kid, and he's very, very smart. Yeah, sometimes for his own good. I'm dreading ten years from I'm, now. <laughs> it, I'm sure it, his <laughs> intellect will be a challenge. Mean, it's challenge be a for everyone. Challenge with him because he's savvy and he's really manipulative. He knows how to work it, but he is just the sweetest kid, and uh, we love him dearly. And um, you know, he's the most hardest working child I've ever seen. We've, we've diagnosed him at a very early age, and um, I did all kinds of therapies, pr uh, protocols with him, and he embraced it all. He's just an amazing child, and he's doing really, really well. And I think that's what's so, what's so great about therapy for, for children with autism. It's not an attempt to take the autism away. It's an mm -hmm. attempt to channel what they're so, you know, what they're innately so great at into, yes. uh, you know, into something that's more, uh, a, life, a life that's more comfortable for them, but it's still really embracing what makes them so different and makes them so great. Absolutely. They're different learners, and it's just a matter of channeling to find out what is that, what, what is their niche, and, um, and we've done it. I mean, we've had trials and errors, and, and we've fallen on our faces, but we've, we've found the right combination with him, and it's working, and sometimes it requires, you know, being a bit savvy, like watching the Beekman boys and, and, and watching you guys farm and, and do your stuff, and, and, and it just, sometimes it just, sparks this interest and we've been gardening ever since we have a huge garden out in the back and we love it as a family so you guys are doing good i have to see you back on television and well, keep it up we thank, love you thank you very much i'm going to give you to ryan so he can take care of your order and then you give you tell david hello and tell him you better eat his breakfast tomorrow All right. okay i'm passing to ryan Oh, I don't have a phone now. I gotta get a phone. Is this phone gonna work? I don't know if this phone works. So that was nice. Tony came by. Tony came by and brought coffee for the whole crew. I'm having some nice cookies left over from Rosemary last night. Um, let's see. What's, where we go? Okay, is everybody up and getting ready for work? Good morning. Josh Brent, Beekman team. Here. Oh, La Habra Heights, California, now 52 degrees. High of 81 degrees today. Oh, I wish I were you. Okay, you guys could do a show going to different restaurants that use only locally grown ingredients for farm fresh from farm to table immediately. That would be fun. That would be a lot of fun. Okay. 
Josh looked surprisingly unzombie-like, given he had no sleep. Well, I have to admit, I cheated. I got two hours of sleep. Sam West, I can't wait to see you guys back on TV. Well, we, we might be. We'll see what happens. What else is here? Okay. Why? The screen is being weird here. Um, Elizabeth Miller. Oh, you're talking to Lori. See, I love this. Everybody talking to each other in the comment thing. Oh, wait, okay. And then Lynn, do you sell a spout for the bottle? Yes, exactly. Well said, Tony. Where's, who was well said, Tony? All right. All right, so it's a little quiet. So if you're here and you want to give a call, what's our number? It's in there, the number 518-284-6039. Just hanging out. Let's see, what can I sell you? So uh, as you've heard me say, the reason we're here today is because it's the busiest day of the year at the Beekman uh, Mercantile. We ship more packages. Between, tomorrow, to, between yesterday and tomorrow, then we ship like almost the whole rest of the year combined because today is the last day for people west of the Mississippi to place your order for holiday delivery. Um, if you're east of the Mississippi, you should probably place it today too. You, you, know, you can push it and wait till tomorrow, but to get your orders in today, we've got full staff back there. Uh, well, now we're in between staff, but the, the morning staff is coming shortly. And so we guarantee everything will get out today. We're real time. We've caught up on all the orders that we have back ordered. They're all going out. So if you call, if you put your, if you put your order in today, we're going to ship it and turn it around, and it's going to be out today. All right. Hey, it's Josh. Who's this? Hey, this is Greg from Buffalo. Did you say Greg? Greg. Hey, how are you doing? I'm doing okay. How about yourself? Do you have snow up there? Yeah, uh, we have uh, we have a, a foot of snow here in the city of Buffalo, and just to, you know, I guess at the airport they said that there's like 22 inches, but when I went out for the paper, we had like three more inches of snow this morning. Hmm. I don't know. I'm looking through the window right now. We got snow coming down. I didn't even know we were going to have any snow. Yeah, well, we're not having any snow right now, but it did its thing overnight, and I guess there's more to come today. It's going to be my one, favorite. It's going to be one of those winters, isn't it? Yes, it is. But hopefully, since it came early, maybe we'll have an early spring. That's all my hope is. Well, I'm with you. I'm, t I'm teaming up with you. Yeah. So okay. I was wondering, I was online and I was checking um, for some of the alpaca foot warmers and the medium. And I guess that they're all out of stock. Do you have them in the store? I'm going to check. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. I'm still looking. Hang on. Okay. Okay, I don't see any in the store. Let me just check in back. Okay. Do we have any medium alpaca? Hang on a second. Okay. Look what I found. Did you find them? I found them. Two pairs, right? Okay, two pairs. Can, can, do, can we spare two pair? Yeah. Okay. Are you going to put them back in stock, Ryan? You put them back in stock so you can order them? Yeah, sure. Okay. Just put the two because I don't want to oversell the other. Okay, here's the deal. He's putting them back in stock right now, but there's really okay. only two. So 
So now it's a race for you to get there before anybody else does. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right. What else are you doing today? Um, gotta go out and work. Wait, you have to go to work? But I don't want to go out and work. I want to stay home and watch you. Well, you can watch me at work. That's what I would do. Yeah, I wouldn't get much done though. Where do you work? And I would, and I would be all that. So we have residential cleaning business. Uh, oh, you have a, a okay. Just, Ronnie just put the. You know, I just heard him yell. He just put the things up. So there's two two medium alpaca foot warm foot uh, liners. Okay. So yeah, I don't want to have to go to work. I'm hearing the bag. You know, I'm hearing how we're just um, uh, you know, behind a little bit you know, with the computer here. So they was like, okay, well, wait a minute, I better turn the volume down here. I'm not listening to myself in the background. So um, yeah, we have that, and we've got like um, the next eight days that we're working, and then we're hopefully going to be taking off from here and going to Tennessee for Christmas. Oh, that'll be beautiful. Where in Tennessee? Yeah. We, uh, we're going to Gatlinburg. We uh, have friends down there, and we would like to relocate there. But um, right now, um, my mother is not well. She's in a, uh, I just had to place her in a nursing home. So I need to, uh, you know, be here for her and or I'm going to have to just uh, find out where to go for her, you know, where to take her. Right. Well, I'm sorry for, I'm sorry for, your, for your mom. I hope she's, I hope she's, you know, it takes a little while for people to get comfortable in new surroundings, especially you know at advanced age. But um, yeah. it is it is the best decision. I I never, you know, people people fret about about putting you know having their parents go into assisted living. Yeah. But it is the best thing for everybody. You know, even though there's an initial rocky period, after this yeah. after they settle in, they're more comfortable. You're more comfortable. They have better care. I mean, it's it's just. Makes so much sense. So I hope that she adjusts quickly, um, and I know she'll be happier than than you know. There's a lot of stress in trying to live independently at that age. Yes, there is. And you know, her roommate had asked me the other day. She said, "Why doesn't your mother want to go out and do anything? You know, because they have activities there for them to do all the time." And I said, "You know, she's just not. The, you know, if I'm there, she would she would go and do something." Yeah. But you know, if um, I'm not there. Then she will just say, you know, stay in a room and just, um, you know, just stay in a room and just do nothing. So. But this is what's this is what's great about assisted living facilities. They they have such a a, a little society of a community culture of their own, and pretty soon there'll be someone there that recognizes that your mother wants to do something, but she's not she doesn't want to have take the initiative to do it herself. So someone, right, one of the other residents will realize that and and start bringing your mother the things. Yeah, and that's what I'm hoping for. Oh, for sure, for sure it will happen. I mean, it's, assisted living places are, are terrific, terrific, terrific. Mm -hmm. Well, I yeah, hope that's so, good. You know, and I'm happy where I got her because the last place that I was at, I, that she was at, I just did not like it at all, and it was just not a good environment for her to be in. So, and that's true. You know, that, that's another thing. It's like you know, like uh, picking assisted living is like picking a therapist. You 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 go to you might go to one, and it might not be the right one. So you can't you can't write them right. all off, and you don't you can't just say, oh well, this is the best it's going to be. You just have to try a couple of them. That's right. Trust me, I've been through That's a couple. Right. I've been through a couple of therapists until I got the right one. Um. Okay, I'm gonna let me see here. Oh, are you, are you ordering now? Yep, I'm ordering. I got it. Okay, marvelous. Oh, good. You won. <laughs> I won. I won. Thank goodness. I'm checking out. <laughs> oh, good. Well, they're, they're, I mean, yeah. they're probably packed. As soon as you hit the click button, they're packing them up and going out. Yeah, probably. So, they yeah, are. Because that was what I tried last night. I said, well, geez, I want them. And so, man, yeah, my... My husband was like this morning, so I said, oh, well, I wanted to get this. I said, I ordered fruitcake last night, and I said, but I ordered something else, but they were out. And he was like, well, what? And I said, I'm not going to tell you. It's for a Christmas gift. Ah. I said, I'm going to call this. I'm going to call the store and see, you know, if they have it in stock in the store because it's not online. Oh, well, I, that's perfect. You know, this time of year, the inventory is so crazy because it just comes in and goes out the same day. We're not, we don't always get it up online. Yeah. So I'm glad you called. If anybody else is worried about or can't find something online, give a call and I'll check for you. All right, I gotta go blow my nose again. I don't want to blow my nose in front of everybody. 
No problem. Okay, Josh, you have a good day. All right, you too. Have fun at work. Okay, thanks. Bye. Okay, bye bye. I'll be right back. Just going to blow my nose. All right, everybody. We're still here. It's kind of, it's a little bit quiet here because we're in between shifts. I think the next shift doesn't come in for like an hour yet. But Brent and Ryan are still back there packing whatever's coming in now. Um, ah, it looks like we have a special guest coming. I see a truck. I wait to see who this is. Uh, VA Pat, will Honor come in today? I think, yeah, Honor will definitely come in later. We have to take her away because was, she wasn't getting good sleep. Monica, Josh, you would make the, a great talk show host. Yeah, for uh, 24. Like, look, at, look at the endurance, the absolute endurance. Hang on one second. We got two UPS trucks coming. Look at us. We have two UPS trucks coming today. Two. Ryan just told me that's unheard of in Sharon Springs. Oh my God, we have a super special guest. Hang on, I gotta put it on Facebook. You're gonna see a close up of my face for a second. Hang on. Special guest coming in the door right now. Let me put it on Facebook. Um, it goes a little bit long way around. It's the best way. Sorry, you guys get this big close-up of my face. See how it's going. All right. I'm, here's the big reveal. Who's our special guest? It's Farmer John. Good morning, everybody. You can't hear the applause, but it's here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh my God! How cold is it? Cold. Yeah. Uh, so how's everything going? Good. Um. I brought two goats with me today. Oh. <laughs> Oh, Farmer John and his goats. I bet you didn't realize that we, our goats aren't actually real. These are, on TV, they look more real than they do in real life. No, it's just too cold to bring them in and out of all the yeah. temperature changes. What What is it today? What is it this morning? I don't know how to look. Yeah. But at least the wind's not blowing. So that makes it, so it doesn't feel like it's that, that cold. That's true, but I can't believe there's so much snow coming down. Yeah, we're supposed to get a bunch today. What's a bunch? I don't know, a few inches. Oh. So... Um, all right, so Farmer John's here. Call anytime. You call with the questions. Um, should we? What's the last one? We brought the two. All right. I don't know if you want. Okay. To this is a big. A secret this reveal. is a big reveal, and I want. Next, I want next, everyone to hear. All right. Let's see what people. I think people thought you were Charo. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's about as good as it gets. <laughs> you, all, I, you all, you can't believe you witnessed that. Um, look at, see, I hope this, this special guest is Farmer John, Farmer John, Charo, Martha, Coochie Coochie, I hope it's Farmer John. Mm -hmm. Oh, Samuel, that's not Oprah. Um, okay, we have a very special reveal here. We, in January, okay, this, uh, this, 
this needs a little story. So John, this time of year, all the goats are pregnant. We're not milking. When, when do you stop milking for the year? Middle of November. Middle of November. So all the goats by then are bred. John stops milking. So now it's a very quiet per period for John. All the all the the females are, are bedded down and you know and they're and they're just getting more and more pregnant. Um, so John has to do something or he goes stir crazy. Right. So he, he John is an, an amazing crocheter. This is one I made that I'm wearing. This is this is a barn. This is what we call a barn scarf. So this year we thought, John, you're crocheting all the time. I bet people would want to buy scarves made by hand by Farmer John. So he is spending all of his time now indoors watching bad videos and crocheting. Yeah. And so, so J Josh has picked out two colors that that he wants for me to to make. So this one is called barley. This is barley. And to tell the significance of the the red stripe. So yeah, that way if you're if you're wearing it out out in the barn and it, and it falls off, you'll be able to find it quickly because uh, you'll have the red end. Exactly, because we like we love the natural colors. Uh, but it's an acrylic wool blend. Right, but the natural I mean the natural colors can get lost if you're outside and it and it blows off and it's in you know in the garden or in the snow or whatever it can get lost. So that's why John makes one end bright red so he can always find it. And then this one is wheat. And then this one is wheat. So we have barley and wheat. Both with the signature Farmer John red dipped end, barn red dipped end. And uh, so you can't get those now, you can't get those for holiday. And But we will, as soon as John gets enough of them made, we'll put them up in January. Yay, John's a fiber artist. Ooh, Denise wants one. Um, I, I, I was going to say we'll sell one, but I don't want to sell one yet. I, you guys have, we have to, we have to launch them. Yep. These well, are gonna amazing. Because I've made a lot of other ones that I'll give away as presents. So. Oh, you can just get a lot for Christmas presents. Yeah. yeah. Um. Well, that's it. Anybody want? You can call in right now. Call Call Farmer John with any questions you got. Talk to Farmer John. What's the number? Five one eight two eight four six zero three nine. Tony brought coffee. You want coffee? No, I'm good. Thanks. So t tell everybody what's going on at the farm. Not a lot. Um, first babies are due um, February 15th. Tamara and Topanga, they're half-sisters. Let's see who this is. It's a private caller. Uh -oh. John, you're getting a private call. Hello, who's this? Uh, this is Suzanne again. Hey, Suzanne, are you called to talk to John? Well, I love his scarves. I, um, I know you want one now, don't you, Suzanne? Yes, I do. <laughs> you can't have one. <laughs> Tell him, ask him if you could save me the white one. I like the white, or the, let's see, what'd you call the white one? Bar wheat. Barley. This is the, the barley one, right? The, yeah, the, uh, the one with, yeah. Okay. We will, uh, how many of you think you're going to be able to make? Well, whatever he makes, we'll sell. Because this is, you know, so so the, the like John said, the first baby come in about February 15th. So whatever okay. he can make between now and February 15th, we're going to. We'll and stop. does he have an idea, or you have an idea, how much they're going to be? Not yet. Um, I, we, you, you know, we don't talk about price, too. Right. <laughs> I, right. <laughs> also, I, tell him that Char, uh, Cheryl goes, coochie, coochie, coochie. Oh, John, do coochie, coochie, coochie. Coochie, coochie, coochie! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Uh, very good. No, those are very nice. I, um, oh, next question. Is that made with polka scott fur or the goats? You know, polka scott really bonded to me that one time I was in the barn with her. She liked me a lot. Well, we tried to get polka scott fur made one time, and but first of all, there's, it, there's usually not enough from one animal to make it. It would be a fortune, absolute fortune. And second well, of all, okay. Second of all, she she's a dirty girl. She's dirty. She lays yeah. down a lot. She because she, she rolls around so much, she gets a lot of burdock in her fur, her fiber. Yeah. So also, I would like to order that uh, honey thingy. So I don't know who I need to talk to to order that. What which honey thing? Where the honey drops down. Oh yeah. <laughs> Hang on, let me. I'll, I'll give you to Ryan. Pardon? Uh, do you want me to give you to Ryan? Oh, are you kidding? It's snowing. Nobody's going to come in. You can just call. Oh, okay. Well, we have to go and find you with things, and then we'll be home later this afternoon. Well, probably today. Um, but, yeah, please give me to Ryan. Uh, 
Ryan. Okay. Uh, Father John, have a very happy Christmas, and you also. Uh, when we, you talk to your mom, tell her that I love that sweater she made you. I, sh I sure will. She'll be so happy. And um, we'll save you one of the barley scarves. So now you're just stuck with me. Yeah. All right, have you been watching? Did you watch last night? No. Oh. What do you think I'm I watched two before? minutes, a couple minutes last night, and I watched a couple minutes this morning to say guess who's coming to town. So, um, Did you see anybody last night? Was, it, was anybody here? We had a lot of people come. Uh, I saw when, when Deb and Kendall were here. De yeah, Deb and Kendall came, and Rick and Nancy Fowl, and Rose. Rose, see, Rose Murray was here, and Doug uh, Garth, I guess. Doug and here. Garth came. They came late, and Tony, Tony came early and brought some food, and then he brought some stuff this morning. Yeah. Super Sharon Spring. Yep. Yep. Um, what do you What are you doing for Christmas? Um, I have friends coming over for breakfast. Josh and Emma are coming. Oh, for they, breakfast they're coming again. to your house. Coming to my house for breakfast again. Oh, what are you we gonna did make that last year? What do you make? Uh, I'm gonna take the biscuit dough and you cut it up in pieces and then mix egg with it and cheese and bacon and then you bake it like in a buck pan. Really? So it's kind of like pull apart breakfast bread. That sounds really good. Mm -hmm. I, made, I made breakfast pizza last year, so yeah. I'm going to do something a little bit different this year. Um, that sounds really good. Do you, oh, yeah. I'm going to go to my parents. Oh, now you go to your parents? Yeah. How's your, how's your dad? He's doing better. Yeah. The cellulitis is all, all oh. cleared up, so. John's dad had such problems with his, his legs and his hip, right? They're mostly like his knees. knees. His knees, knees and his back. And then he had cellulitis in his arm, which I had cellulitis in my leg two years yeah. in a row. What is cellulitis? It's an infection under the skin, usually just from getting a little tiny cut somewhere, and it just that bacteria finds its way into a spot and under your skin, and it swells up, and you mm -hmm. never go on antibiotics. So it must it must have something to do with your genetic makeup. If you, probably. you're probably just more susceptible. to yep. it. you guys do not have good bones. No, but we're well, all well, well, you're working. To we're we're, we're, we're workhorses, yeah. so yeah. yeah. Your mom's super healthy. She's got her issues too. <laughs> so she's got arthritis. She's got different things that she has to deal with too. But she's very fair skinned, so she's got to be careful of the sun. Yeah, so. your mom is very fair skinned. Yeah, that's the German. So. She was probably German in English. Yep. She was like a probably like a bathing beauty when when she was younger. Yep. Right? Yep. Alabaster skin. Um. So how many goats are we expecting this year? Hopefully around 120. A little more than last year because I didn't. So I thought many. we had over 200 last year. Oh, babies. 221 yeah. babies. Okay, so we had 200. Um, so well, over 200 yeah. kids again. Yeah. Okay, so roughly the same amount yeah. as last year. Yeah. Um, and they start coming February 15th. Yeah. But you said there some of the early uh, inseminations didn't go Well, they, that would have been the night. They're doing the 19th. There's four of them that were artificially inseminated through the college, and that was done on the 19th. So they're due the 19th, those four. Oh, okay, okay. Um, but then there, there, there'll be a gap, or not much of a gap. Usually, about from the 15th of February till about the 15th or 16th of, uh, of May, because I just removed the Golden Guernsey Buck Robert from the goats oh, yesterday, and he went to visit with some other girls next okay. door. I hear the phone. Let me get the phone. Cause I'm sure he wants to. Oh, oh, hey, I'm sorry, I missed it. Is this Susan? Yes, it is. Hey, here's John. John, do you know Susan Littlefield? I don't think so. Okay, I suddenly feel like the one person out of place in this conversation. Um, so, <laughs> Susan, um, Susan Littlefield is one of the preeminent, one of the, literally the top five, uh, she's been awarded, one of the top five farm journalists in the country. Mm -hmm. She's in Nebraska. Um, what's the radio network? It's uh, KZEN and the Farm and Ranch Market Network. So her, her farm reports, reports are heard all across the country, and she is amazing. We met her first in Nebraska, and we did we did a gardening show together, she and I, all all last last year, and we just think she's the best, and she's she is and she is incredibly smart. 
So you guys, you guys can talk farming. Do you know anything? What's going on with goat milk? There's no market for goat milk, so. Oh yeah, I'm sure there is. It's it's pretty demanding product when you've got somebody who can't, you know, drink cow's milk. That's the first thing that doctors send them towards is goat's milk. And I grew up raising dairy goats, so I'm jealous at all the does you got ready to start kidding pretty soon. And if you need barn help, I could probably do my radio show from the barn. Oh, we could do the. Do you want to do the radio show from the barn sometime? I should do that sometime. That would be a lot of fun. That would be awesome. Susan, when are you going to come out and visit us? I am trying to figure that out right now, but you guys have snow, and I've got grass right now, so that's just not I'll right. Wait till the weather clears a little bit, maybe. Yeah, you're you're supposed to have worse weather than we are. Yeah, it's gonna get it's gonna get cold, and we've got a blizzard. They said that we could get here in the next couple of weeks, so we'll see what happens. But I did have a question for for Farmer John. Yeah, good. I wanted to know from. And I'm putting my journalism hat on. For all those folks that are watching right now, if you could describe to them the care that you give to to your does before they start kidding. Usually about a month before they're due to kid, um, I start increasing, slowly increasing the amount of, of grain that they get. So that Because the last two months of their pregnancy is when the kids grow the most. So, and then the last month is when they really need to start to develop that supply of milk that, that's going to be fed back to the kids. Um, I also give them a shot of BOCI, which is a vitamin E and selenium um, shot to help um, prevent the, the white muscle disease, which can be passed on to the kids. Um, a lot of times when kids are born, if they have that white muscle disease, they'll walk on their, their knuckles. Um, and with giving the shot of BOCI, that can help prevent that. Um, since I've been doing that on a regular basis, um, I very rarely have any of the kids um, born with the, the, the white muscle disease and if they are born with it then I, they just get a little like about a quarter to a half a cc of uh, of that BOCI to help get them so that they're up on their up on their feet um, and during this time of year because um, it is so cold in the barn um, I, I spoil them and, and I carry wa warm water from from the milk house into the into, out to the goats so that way, if they, they drink more water, that's better for them. Wait, this, is, at, this yeah. is not the only time of year you spoil your goats. You spoil well, your goats spoil every time, day of the year. That's why they aren't subjected to make. I don't make them go outside and eat pasture. Um, I bring them the food, so they're fed hay. Farmer John, much Susan, Farmer John cuts the grass and brings it to the goats. That doesn't surprise me one bit, and I'm thinking this spring we may have to do a podcast or two with him. Yeah, but that'd be fun, though. No. That would be that'd be great. Um, oh, you were saying something. Tell 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 people. I think people will be interested about them after the birth. What you give them? Oh, so so once they have their kids, because they um, have um, used so much energy to get to have those kids, I usually give them warm water with some molasses in it. Um, that's kind of a little, you know, it's a sweetness, and it's got some other things that are, that are in molasses that can help them bounce back some calcium. Um, try to do it as natural as possible. I don't like to give them um, a lot of the, the drenches or anything like that. Um, for the most part... Is that like a Gatorade or something for... Pretty, pretty much. Okay. I mean, people do give them Gatorade constantly, but, but that's got yeah. a lot of sugars in it, too. So. Yeah. No, well, at least molasses has got high sugar, which it right. should have. For the but, energy. I mean, they're only getting that, that one time. I mean, yeah. you've got to make sure your goats aren't too fat at kidding time, too. Because if there's too much fat on the inside, they may look healthy on the outside. But if they're too fat on the inside, that fat will push up against their rumen, and, and and that'll make them them sick. So they can get ketosis, milk fever, which usually once a goat's down with milk fever, it's very hard to get them back up. That's the one thing, Susan. You can attest to this that that I that I've learned. I mean, I've learned a lot from Farmer John. But when when a farm animal gets sick, it is very hard. To get get them better. I mean, it's it's, it's much easier to keep them healthy all along because they're not. To me, it's not like humans where you get sick, you get the right medicine, you're you're back on your feet in two days. With goats, you know, they get sick. You have to figure out what's wrong with them. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to make a diagnosis with which isn't always correct. And then and even then, even with the best treatment, they they often don't make it. Mm -hmm. It's exactly. It's so much better to be proactive than it yeah. is reactive when it comes to animals getting sick. And, and it is hard to prevent sometimes, but boy, I tell you, you've impressed me and I'm sure a lot of the folks that are listening with just the regime and the daily things that you do to keep those does healthy because really it is your bottom line and your income. 
It, it is, and and he and what, and what makes it hard is he does it in a really natural way. Um, yep. And that makes it hard. It's easy. It's easy to give your goats all these, you know, fake, fake drinks and and shots of things and keep them healthy. That that's that's easy, but your your quality of milk suffers. Yep. And I think that you overall make the animals weaker in the long run. Right. So. It does a lot of trial and error. I mean, from the start there, you always would read things about feeding this and feeding that. Of course, you feed this and you feed that, and then then the animals don't didn't do as well. I mean, I used to feed some beet pulp. I mean, I probably fed too much. But, I mean, I had I ended up having issues from that, and I stopped feeding it, and those issues went away. Right. So. It's trial and error. And, and Susan, you know, it's you know, the goat the goat industry is, is not as established. It's a relatively new. But it's growing. It's, it's growing very fast, but it's not like, you know, the, the cattle dairy, the dairy industry, which, um, you know, has been around for generations and generations, and they all have it figured out. So, Goat farmers that are trying to do a medium to large scale operation still have to experiment and learn a lot on their own. Mm -hmm. But goat milk is the, is the most drank milk in the world. Goat meat is the most eaten meat in the world mm -hmm. because goats goats aren't that hard to raise. Their their browsers are not grazers. That's why in, in other countries that that goats are so prevalent because they're right. They're not hard to raise, but you have to be really skilled to get a good yield of milk. Yeah. Right. And that's the other thing people think. Uh, people think, oh, you just milk an animal, and you the milk, whatever milk you get is the milk you get. But that's not true. You have to. You, the better you tr treat the animal, the nutrition it gets, the higher the yield. Um, it's a science. Yeah, versus the amount of grain that they're taking in, and that's all your that's all your costs. I, mean, I, we tell people when we're on the road all the time how complicated farming is. You know, Susan, you work, you deal with farmers all the time, so they they speak your language, but most. Most people we meet, they just think farming is oh, I, you get a few animals, you put them in the barn, you, you squeeze on some udders, and you and you get milk. And it is such a science. If it was only that easy, right? <laughs> I know. If it was only that easy, everybody would be farmers. Um, exactly. Well, you do a great job, and I know that um, just in the time that you talk to folks, it, it really is a great way to educate them on what happens behind those barn doors, and it may actually open up the door to somebody who has a small acreage that might want to try it as well. Yeah, and there, there are quite a few people out there that have just a few goats and they're making making their own soap and they, they've started some small businesses of their own. So, I mean, I've got some Facebook friends that, that are doing that. So And John John is always great about, you know, when, if, if you, well, I shouldn't say this. If, I was going to say, if you, find him on, if you find him on Facebook, he'll answer all your questions. Uh, no. But he gets, you know, during kidding season, he gets so busy, yeah. we, can, we, yeah. we try not to inundate him with uh, Facebook stuff. Well, that makes definite sense. I wanted to let you know I did some shopping, too. Oh, you, After we talked the last time, I went on your guys' website and got my husband a couple Christmas presents. So. Oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check on your order. Okay, that'd be great. Yeah. And if anybody has, has a chance to, to get to Sharon Springs this, you know, by this coming weekend, um, I'm going to plug my family's um, businesses. Um, my sister Patty, um, Stonehouse Farms, Decifus. Um, on Link Road in Sharon Springs, they have a sap house, and they are selling maple syrup products and maple syrup. Uh, my sister Shirley, who made me my Farmer John quilt, also has some some um, quilts and some um, rugs that she she hand weaves up there. And I think I do have a, a scarf or two up there. So if you happen to be in Sharon Springs, head up to Stonehouse Farms and and on Link Road and in Leesville, and um, you can do some shopping and. Yes. Help support the community. Did you say Shirley's got her stuff? Shirley, there? my sister Shirley has some of her stuff up there too. Her rugs, placemats, John, runners. John's, you know, uh, people people who watch the show know John's family is, is local and they've been here for for a good long time, not forever, but for a good long time. And uh, they've been, always been so so nice to us. All of you, all of your sisters. Now, okay, this will surprise nobody, but John is the baby boy. Well, I've got three older sisters and a younger sister. Three older sisters and a younger sister. So you can only imagine how spoiled John was growing up. You were always the I wouldn't know if I was spoiled. Yeah, you were, well, by your sisters. You were. <laughs> I used to fight with my sisters. Terrible. So I imagine most anybody that... Spoiled's okay, guys. Yeah. yeah. But he's been... Um, look, John's family's been so good to us from the very first day we got here. So we really appreciate it. And, and, and Sap House... Or, uh, Stonehouse Farm. Stonehouse Farm, his sister's uh, place is 
packed for breakfast as soon as the cereal yeah. comes. February through April is um they do pancake breakfast. Through. Oh, oh hey, well, look at it. I felt really bad because I brought coffee for Josh, oh. and look what I made for Brent. He said, "Where are my donuts?" So I went back and I made the donuts. Oh my God! Feel how warm they are. So now, we, now we're spoiled. <laughs> we like a donut. Oh, Susan, do you want a donut? I would love one. <laughs> These are old-fashioned cake donuts. Cake donuts. But they have a little apple cider in them, mm -hmm. so they have the perfect combination of apple oh. cider and cake donuts. Oh, my and they're God. just, oh. just made. You know what's really good with those cake donuts is to put them on a plate and pour fresh, warm maple syrup over the top. Oh, my God. Mm. These are amazing. These, Susan, I'm holding them up to the camera and right now. They're falling apart. Wow. Well, I actually make one, a maple bacon donut, mm -hmm. but Josh gave me a great idea the other day to do a hickory mm -hmm. bacon donut, which I haven't done yet. So let me give these to Brent before he gets mad. Oh, thank you. Bye. Bye. Oh, these are great. Yeah. Well. Fresh hot donut. So now you have to come to Sharon Springs to go to the Black Hat? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we go right now. They've probably got a batch coming out of the oven. Well, I'll try to book a plane and, and jump right over there. That would be awesome. So, yeah, well, we really, I, appreciate, we, I appreciate you, John, taking some time to talk to me and, and talk about the goats as well. Well, yep. thanks. Thank you for calling. And if, you, if you're bored later on, call later. Ryan was on the phone, so he's checking on your order. But Okay, sounds great. I look forward to com it coming in the mail. All right, it'll come out today. All, All right, right sounds good. Merry Christmas, guys. Thank you. Merry talk Christmas. Later. Yep, bye-bye. Okay, I got. I think I got somebody here. Are you still there? Oh, let me put you on speaker. All right, what's your name? Hi, I'm Pam. 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 Uh huh. And you got a question for John? Yes, I want to know when John's gonna publish a book on goat keeping. Oh. John, I have time to do that. You Unless I were doing. Oh, sure you do. Well, if I if I do that this time of year, then I can't make the scarf. So that's a trade off. <laughs> so, but everybody would love a book on goat keeping. Yeah. Well, the the ones that I started out was was Stories Guide to to Raising Goats. That was my uh -huh. my start. So that's what when a lot of people do ask me how how what to do, that's what the book that I that I refer them to is. Is that one, uh -huh. and then just on the internet. Uh, yeah. So. Well, you're awesome, and we Thank all you. love you so much. Thank you. Um, and you keep those boys alive, I tell you. Yeah. Yeah, I had to go over and shovel their steps. I mean, all that snow. And I, <laughs> I did the plowing of the driveway, and then I see the the steps still weren't cleared off, so I went over and cleared the steps. For them. Did you shovel yeah. the stairs? <laughs> well, you I was afraid they were gonna fall. We all love you. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, it's, you know, anybody who's come to the farm knows that, you know, we, we're big, we're neighbors. We couldn't be closer. John's house and you know, ours are right across the driveway from each other. We're, we're all right neighbors, right? We don't have any loud, loud parties. Well, I never see you, so. <laughs> well, makes for good neighbors. <laughs> we don't even need a fence. No. Um, well, wishing you a wonderful, wonderful holiday, and this has been really fun to watch. Well, yeah. thank you. Thank you very much. We'll see who who shows up uh, later today. We got so John's here now. I bet I think it gets busy. Although the snow might keep people away. <laughs> where where so, are you calling from? Guys, have fun. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Idaho. Wow. I did you put your order in yet? Um, you know, I'm just looking at it today. Oh, where do you gotta look today? Today's the last day to order for you guys. Okay. What? All right. You, Thanks you, so much, guys. Merry you, Christmas, Pam. See you later. Bye. All right. Here's a uh, uh, Dan. Are you there? Oh yeah, I'm right here. All right. This is Dan, you know Chad, Chad and Dan. Okay. Yep. Chad and Dan. Yeah. Hi, John. Yes. What? What's going on, Dan? Talk to John here. Give a give a chat. Oh, well, not much. Just got up and did the tours out here. So, John, I'm really curious about the fact that you know to get all the milk, you know, the mothers have to have the baby. So, how how often do you have the birth the baby? Um, the ghosts just have um, one kidding a, a year. 
So, I mean, their gestation is five months, so they start. I start breeding them in September. Um, like I said, I, I just stopped breeding them now, so they'll have kids through February through May. So. Ah. Uh, so, what's the gestation period? Five months. What? Five, five months. Nope. Yeah, are you there? Yeah, I'm getting a bad signal out here on this. Oh yeah, you're in the middle, you're in the middle of nowhere, right? <laughs> Pretty much. We're all in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> yes, we are. So what's the gestation period, John? Five months. Ah. Oh, well, that's cool. Yeah. So we all ready? Dan, do you? And Josh, I mean, John, I know you've been. You probably slept a little bit. We got a bit of the chores. How are you hanging in there, Josh? Me, I'm doing fine. I'm just sitting here eating donuts. I got the best job. Well, that's good. Do you? I do. I forget. Do you and Chad? Do you have any animals? Oh yeah, we have chickens. We're getting ready to start cattle. We have the beehives. We have we raise angora rabbits. Hmm. So. Which it's time to go out to the bunny barn here in a minute to take care of them. <laughs> we used to have rabbits. We kind of we kind of uh, let them go naturally. Um, the we, rabbits came to the farm. Right. There was there were no animals on the farm except for a rabbit and a pheasant. Pheasants and the chickens. Were there chickens? Yep. Yeah, there were chickens. Of course, there were chickens. But they were we didn't know how old they were. Right. Um, yeah, rabbits are a lot of a lot of work for not much return. They are. I mean, with the angoras, we can harvest the fiber. Right. But, and believe me, they get a lot. But, mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, I haven't. You know, and, and you can relate to this with, with working full time, too. It's hard to have the time to be able to find an outlet for the, the fiber and process it. So I just have bags of it everywhere. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, yeah, that, that's the biggest thing with any fiber animal. I mean, e even sheep. I mean, it's expensive to find somebody to to mm -hmm. process that in, into to some type of a, a you know yarn to be able to make something with. So. Oh, exactly. And I've been trying to. I want to spin it because yeah, you know, we live on the family farm. My parents and my brother and everybody lives here, and they're all crocheters. I've been trying to get you know. Get into yarn, so I thought, well, she, all this stuff we're buying yarn to crochet and stuff with, I can process some, but it doesn't happen. <laughs> no, fiber, fiber is tough. Um, yeah, and having yarn, uh, we hear you about having a full time jo job. I mean, can you can you remember when you were working at, at uh, MVP? Right. Working at MVP full time, and then <clears throat> even during kidding season. Right. I don't, I don't I know how you did that. Took ex <laughs> an extra long vacation from there, but that nearly killed you. Yep, that was. And that was back when your uh, when your uh, hip was bad. Bothered me yeah. before just before I had the surgery. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, the hip replacement. Yeah, those were those were tough days for all of us. Yep. <laughs> but all right, Dan. Thanks for calling. You know, thank you guys. Enjoy your. Enjoy our snow. <laughs> all right. We'll talk later. All right. Bye, Josh. All right. Bye. bye. So here we got Justin, right? Yes. Hey, Justin. Good morning, guys. How are you? Hey. Good. You know Justin, right, John? Butler. Justin. Uh, Justin Butler, yeah. right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, we have yet to officially actually get together and say hi to each other. Right. We will soon, I promise. Well, where we, where did we just see you? Victorian. Oh, Victorian. It's when I had gone home, he, he was here when I went back up to, to take care of the goats. Oh, so. you missed each exactly. other. Exactly. We just missed each other by just a matter of a few hours. He yeah. left, I came, I left, he came. Yep. So, cashew brittle. Yes, thank you. Hey. Like I said, don't get your dentist mad at me. Yeah. So you have? Did you have a question for John? Yeah, I, I just want to. I just wanted to mention. I see the the scarves that you are going to be making, and I absolutely love the look of them. Thanks. 
they just are, are amazing. They look extra long. And that's what I like. I like. I got like a thick neck or something really weird going on, but yep. and I like a long scarf. Yep. Awesome. Yeah, you can wrap it around. I mean, I can wrap it around my neck twice, and it still comes down midway. Oh, uh, that's great. Cause I'm gonna really look forward to those coming in January. Yeah, and hopefully I can get quite a few made. Good deal. Good deal. Well, that's about it. I just wanted to mention I like them and I think they're awesome and everybody does such a wonderful job and you know, all that awesome stuff. And what are you doing? Uh, what are you doing for Christmas, Justin? Um, it's just going to be me, Bill, and his mom here Christmas Day. My sister's coming over Christmas Eve. Well, that's good. Are you cooking? Uh, yeah. Well, well, not on Christmas Eve. Christmas dinner we'll have. Um, I forget. We'll look a pork roast or something, I don't know. Bill had looked it up, and we're going to do something. Do you, you don't have any of our honey, do you? No, I don't. Oh. So that would I, make a nice little coating on that. It does. I, I always use a rosemary honey at the, very, at the end of the pork roast as it's roasting. Just oh, at, that sounds amazing. Yeah. And I, just at the very end. If you put the honey on in the beginning, then it burns. Gotcha, um, gotcha. Put it on for the last 10 minutes, and then you get this nice golden, crusty honey thing. Oh, that's amazing. I, I'm going to have to make sure I get some because it does sound like a nice finishing product, you know, coating on the tops and stuff. It is. Well, that's that's all the all of our cooking, honey. There's there's that. There's the ginger one that's that's good. To, the ginger is good with fish. The, um, if it, I don't know. If anybody hasn't tried our flavored honey, that's, that's a big seller category for us. But the ginger honey, uh, ginger honey, what else do I put? The chipotle... And the rosemary. I, I sometimes I'll just mix, especially the ginger. Mix it with um, and oh, lemon honey. That's what I'm saying. Mix it with soy sauce. Um, a little bit more soy sauce than the honey, and you mix it together, heat it all up, and then you uh, uh, base the fish with it mm -hmm. and grill it. Oh my God! I never even thought of that. I just think honey, and, and just just me. I think honey. I think tea, and I'm not a big tea person. Yeah, but you know, I never thought of like incorporating it onto food. There is, and honey and soy sauce together are amazing. Good on salmon. Yeah, yeah. And wow, I'm gonna have to try that. Do you, do you have any of the chipotle honey? You don't have any. Do you not have any of our honey? You don't even have any of the cheese. Well, that's because it doesn't last more than a day. We are the we are the worst. Cheese. When was the last time we we had some black cheese? When you have everybody at the farm. Oh my God. <laughs> hey Megan. <laughs> Oh, is there any black cheese here? Okay. Um, did, oh, you know the, the pinch boom didn't come out. We were trying to make a special cheese for Christmas, and it over-ripened. Mm -hmm. Too bad. Well, what were you trying to make for that? Well, there, we have this great our, our, our artisanal producer out west of here. Uh, her name is Renata, and she made the Zox cheese this summer, which was delicious. It's, I mean, it's a hardcore cheese. You have to be a real cheese lover to love it. Um, and then she was going to make a special one for Christmas that um, was washed in pine liqueur. It had this great reddish hue on the outside. Mm -hmm. Oh, had, no kidding. Yeah, and then had roasted pine needles on the top okay, of it. Yep. I mean, mm -hmm. so pretty, so beautiful. But as with any artisanal product, or, you know, cheese has to has to age out for so long, and it's a raw milk product, and it's, it's like a science experiment. You never know what's going to happen. And unfortunately, it ripened to, before we could legally sell it. Oh, no. And the whole batch is ruined. Oh. I know, I know. But we'll try again. We, we like to experiment. Well, very good. Well, good. All right. Well, you have a a great rest of the day. Are you, what are you doing? I'm in process of trying to get ready and dressed for work. Oh, good. And okay. That's about the sum of it. <laughs> all, all right. Well, do your best. Are you, you're going to have to know where you are. Oh, yes, yeah, we're just an hour and a half from you guys. We got yeah. hit with the same storm. We got 11 inches out here. Oh, my goodness. All right, well, be drive safely today. Uh, will do. And, guys, thank you, John. Thank you for everything that you do, Brent, Josh, and the whole mercantile team. Wish you a very merry, blessed Christmas and a happy new year. Oh, gosh, thank you. You're merry such, Christmas, such great support. Merry Christmas. Take care, guys. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hi there, are you still there? Hi, yes I am. Hi, who is who's this? This is Sandy from Syracuse. Hi. Sandy and John to come down. Hi. Hi Sandy. Hi John. 
I enjoyed my apple cake. Good, good. Okay, Sandy, you chat with John a second. I gotta clean up this desk. Okay. Mm. Oops. Okay, cold there last night, huh? Yeah, it got real cold down here last night. Yep. Yeah, this morning, um, the the frost on the trees and, and shrubs and stuff like that was was almost like one of those hoar frosts. So, I'll have to post, I took some pictures. So I'll have to post pictures on my Facebook, but later yeah. today. Yeah. Yeah, it was cold here, but not. Josh was saying it was uh, 10 below, and it was, I think, zero here at the time. Wow. Must be you getting some of the lake effect warmth yep. there. Yep. <laughs> you usually no get the lake. snow, but now you got some warmth out of it, huh? <laughs> I guess. Yep. So did Josh, did you get into your cake yet? Oh, the cake has been gone for several, for quite a while now. <laughs> <laughs> Desserts don't last very long in my house, even though I, you know, I'm the only one there to eat it, so they go fast. So I'll have to make another trip down in February and bring you some more. Yep. Well, come towards the end of February, and then you can go up to my sister's for pancake breakfast. That's Whoa. right, right off Route 20. I'll probably come right down past it. So. <laughs> um. So is Josh back yet? Yeah, Josh I'm is here. back. I'm here. I stayed up till almost four o'clock watching you. I, I just couldn't turn it off, and I'm like, going, "Oh my gosh, I'm so tired." You. But then I. You were just waiting for me to do something stupid. It was like watching the car crash, wasn't it? No, I just couldn't believe it kept going, and it was it was hilarious. I was just enjoying it. So it was better than TV. I turned the TV off. I said, "I'm going to go watch this." <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Did you did you see it? And I made it until four. Some four. Yes, I did. In fact, I, then I woke up, I kind of snoozed off a little and woke up at 5 and it turned it and I'm like, ah, Brent's still going like crazy man in the background. I'm like, oh my God. Did he go all night? Brent is still here. Oh my God. I know, I'm trying to send him home because he's he's got to sleep a little bit so we can... Brent, come say hi. Who is it? Sandy. Sandy. Sandy Henley from Syracuse. <laughs> She can't. It's, it's a delay. But no, oh, I'm waving, Sandy. Hi. Oh, hi. How are you? Good. How are you? When are you going home? Very soon. The new team is starting to arrive. Who's here now? Uh, Sarah just got here. Okay. So who do we got? Sarah, Megan, and Ryan. Yeah, Ryan's getting ready to leave. Okay. Yeah. So both. So far, the people who've been here the longest are are Brent and Ryan. Wow. Amazing. You so, guys are so devoted. Well. I mean, we're not going to let people miss their Christmas presents. That's that's well, that's good for us. I mean, if we could push, if we could push Christmas back, we would, but I don't I don't see that happening. <laughs> John, yeah, I brought my friends there with us when we came for the Victorian Christmas, and they got a fruit cake too because he loves fruit cake, and his wife never tried it. And I said you have to try it because even John, my John, didn't like fruit cake until he had yours, and it is like the best. Their fruit cake is already gone. I'm like, come on, we got to go make another trip then, I guess. <laughs> uh, yeah, we have to hurry. What did, I, Ryan just told me there were like 16 left on the shelf. Oh, no, and then that's it for the year? That's it, because, yeah, we don't we don't make the fruit cake past Christmas. So, um, and I know. Should, though. If you want it, why not? Well, if you want it, you can order it, and then we'll hold it for you. Okay. I'd really like to come down Saturday for the book signing, but... Um, it's also my grandson's birthday, so I'm kind of torn. Oh. <laughs> well, you know what? I will put one aside for you regardless, because even if you don't make it, we'll, we'll, we can sell it on, on Sunday if you don't make it on Saturday. Okay. Oh, you're so sweet. That's what we do here. John, am I so sweet? Aren't right, I so sweet, yeah, John? Yeah. Look, look at John's, uh, <laughs> John's choking. <laughs> choking? Yes. <laughs> choking on the sweetness. <laughs> oh, come on. Oh, you, oh, you guys are the sweetness of Sharon Spring. How's that? All of you. <laughs> well, I, maybe. My gosh, it looks like a snow globe out there. It is beautiful. Mm, yeah, beautifully cold. Yeah, now I want people, if there's anybody around today and that has a really, really good four-wheel drive, we want to. I want some people to come by and come shopping today so we can chat together. Because uh, God knows I'm running out of things Are the roads bad there? Is what? 
Are the roads bad? Well, they're probably not going to be great, but if, you, if you're good with a four-wheel drive, you can make it. Yeah, I don't think I am. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it's you don't have a good you? weather from here. <laughs> um, oops. All right, I think I'm going to try another call. Okay, love you guys. All right, Bye, love you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Bye. Bye. Nope, I lost some. If anybody's, anybody's still here, can you stay for a couple more minutes? Yep. If anybody's still around and you want to talk to John, give a call. What's the number? 518. How, how do you know the number? 6039. I remember numbers just like I remember goat's names. Let's see. Okay, this is what everybody does here, and it still freaks me out. They never use the area code. You don't have to when you're dialing. You know, if you're already in the 518 area code. If you're already in the 518 area code, you don't have to dial the area I know, but that's that's in the big cities. In the big cities. Big cities. In the big cities. In New York, you have to still have to dial the area code because there's more than one area code. Right. So when people start... Well, then you're in a different area code then. Yeah, but they're all mixed together. They're not separated. So like somebody they're not with, separated by, by, by region? No, so like somebody with a 646 number in New York can live right next door. Like, two next, one, yeah. to a 912. 212 or 917. So here, yeah, they always just use the three numbers. So anyway, if you want to call here, the area code is 518-284-6039. All right, I didn't even need to finish. Hey, hey there, it's Josh and John. Hello. Hello. Who's this? My name is Jennifer. Hey, Hi, Jennifer. Jennifer. Hi, I have a question for you, uh, John, about the goat. Yep. Yeah. Um, I, you mentioned that you had some artificially inseminated yep. for the college. Yep. Uh, what kind of relationship do you have with the college? Uh, do the students come there? Uh, how does that go? Um, well, one of the professors there has become a very good friend of mine, um, Dr. Cindy Shelley. Um, I've purchased goats from her. Um, I rent, rent her bucks. Um, every year to, to breed a bunch of my does, the, the sonnens and the sables, and so um, I have been able to procure um, an intern for the last two years, and I've already signed up uh, an intern to help me with the kidding again this year. Um, they earn college credits for uh, for their internship with me, so. We had, well, that's, John that's had a nice. great intern this year. Julie. Julie. Yep. It's nice that they're close and they can learn from you. And uh, I, I go to college there. However, I'm just in the business program, so I uh -huh. thought it interesting when you mentioned that uh, you use them for artificial semination, and that's that's pretty. That's a nice thing to do for the the, the students in the area. Yeah, I have a two-year degree from from SUNY Cobleskill and Liberal Arts. So. Oh, okay. John, that's did, nice. That was my question. Thank you very much. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays to you. Thank you very much. Yeah, people may, may not know this, but John was distinguished, one of uh, SUNY Cobble Skills distinguished alumni this year. I don't know how distinguished you are. No. No. <laughs> I'm an alumni. You're, 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 you're an alumni. You're, you're a special alumni. Oh, wait. Okay. I've got to take this. There's, one, there's a call here, and I'm going to answer this one. Hey there, you're, John's here. Hello. Hi. How are you? Good. Who's this? I am an original uh, Beekman, and um, I miss the show very much. But we live in Bahama, North Carolina. You guys have shipped us stuff in the past, and we are goat farmers. Okay. And um, one question that I have, ours are all rescue goats. Um, we take them in from different counties and different rescue areas. And we have a combination, most of them are pygmy, a couple of them are um, uh, paganchas, which is the La Mancha and the pygmies, and then we've got uh, one baby boy that we started bottle feeding at two weeks last year. But do you let yours out a whole lot in the winter time, or do you keep them in the barn most of the time? Um, right now the doors are closed because it's been so cold the last few days. Um, okay. I don't know when the sun shone. I guess the sun shone a little bit the other day, but it was still really cold. Um, but okay. if it's a nice sunny day, I'll open up the door so they can get some of that natural vitamin D that they that they deplete so much. 
Yeah, well, that was my next question. I know mine love the sun, and we have uh, been able to get different spools, and I bring pallets home from work, and we make them play equipment and different things, and they love to lay out and sun all the time. Yeah. Um, but um, they are... The one thing, the biggest problem we've had is we've got seven of them, and because uh, four of them came from um, a really bad situation, one of them came from an old petting zoo, and then a couple others we got as babies and bottle fed, but introducing the new ones with the old ones, they are very mean to each other. Oh, yeah. that That's just a natural, they're, they're establishing the pecking order. Okay, how long does it take for them to work out the pecking order, or will it continue? Forever. They might still do it. Okay. Even the ones that okay. have been together for, for eight or nine years now, they'll still pick fights with everybody else. And, it's, it's, it, and I don't know how much they're really fighting, as I, I think they're, they're kind of like playing. Yeah. We, um, all of ours have horns. And um, we, because most of them came that way, I mean, they were never, you know, debutted. But uh -huh. um, they're a blast to watch and play with. And Bopper, we actually had to raise him in the house uh -huh. um, for the first six weeks of his life. Uh -huh. And he could have stayed in the house if he'd learned to control his bladder, but he <laughs> couldn't. So he no. had to go to the barn. Well, you know, you bring up an interesting thing about, about the disbutting. Um, because we, we've gotten some some emails about oh how can you how can you disbud and that's that's the process that actually when goats are young for people who don't know uh, when goats are young you actually sort of burn burn the horns um, so that they don't grow anymore and some people are like oh how can you do that they they have the horns it should be natural let it grow but when you have a herd of 120 and they and they all have a pecking order. If you had a hundred, if you had 120, 130 goats with horns, they would just be bloody messes every day. Right. It, it, oh, it's, yeah. a, it's a personal choice too. Um, a lot of people say that that's how they sweat. Um, could be, um, but just from from reading my my first goat book, um, it said if there's there's no horns have no place in a goat dairy because they can not. Viciously, but I mean, they can just have to turn their head a little bit if you're right there, and and they can catch you in the face. Um, they can catch each other in the eyes. I mean, oh yeah, oh so. yeah. Well, these all came with them, so yeah. we made the choice, you know, to to just keep a herd that has them. Um, but they um, they're actually the best thing I have found about horns is when you have to trim their feet. It gives you a really good thing to hold, on, to hold to. on to. Yeah. Oh, that's it. That's true. Yeah. When I usually when I trim their feet, the the does are on the milk stand. So they can't yeah, get away from we them. don't milk, so yeah. we just feed them and enjoy them, and they're wonderful creatures. Yes, they are. Well, well, I hope you all have a Merry Christmas, and I am thoroughly enjoying watching this at work, and I love my goat bowls that I've got and everything else I've ordered from you guys, and I wish you all the best into a new year, and um, I wish you guys were back on TV every week. Well, maybe we will someday. I'm ho I'm holding up the goat bowl so people can see. Th these are they're made by Sunny Lineheart. They're fabulous. They're fabulous. I use them for um, like putting nuts or different things out, um, and they're they're very well. I've enjoyed everything I've ordered from Beekman, from cookbooks to the blankets. Um, it, the quality of everything we've gotten has been phenomenal. But I mean, the, I mean, the thing about these goat bowls, I, you, I'm sure you've got a couple. What I can't believe is that I don't even know how Sunny came up with this price, but they're only eighteen dollars, and they're all handmade. She hand glazes them, and they have this great, cute little goat stamped in the very bottom. I don't know if I can show it so people see. There's a little goat stamped in the very bottom of each each one, and they're terrific for nuts. And I th I'm yep. sorry, so I think Sunny has to raise that price next time she brings them in because... Well, I think it is a steal for that. Um, the other thing that I, I've kind of lost the battle at was I have the square planter with the goat in the middle, the topiary. Oh, yes. And sadly, I killed some of the herbs I had planted in it when we went on vacation. I forgot to water it. Yeah. Oh. And, but that is, if you've got any of those to show, it is like one of the neatest things I've got in the kitchen. And everybody that comes in goes, wow, you've got a goat topiary. And um, they are a really neat gift.
Um, they, yeah, they really are. Um, uh, and you can replant. So, I mean, you, you can just put new herbs in it this year. Yeah, or I thought about actually trying to do ivy. We'll see. Yeah, you um, do ivy. John, or, uh, Brent likes to do um, succulents. Ah, I thought about that. And those are those are pretty hard to kill. Yeah, yeah. Well, we live in an old farmhouse out in the country like you guys, and I know there's a, a ton of maintenance, and we laughed at you guys about the flies, I guess it was, on the one show, because we we have a bunch of ladybugs. Oh, oh yeah, the, oh, the Asian beetles. You know, they're not real ladybugs. Well, North Carolina is full of them. I'm sure Brent's mother's got a house full, too. Yeah. Yeah, we no, we we have those along with the flies. We're we're a regular pestilence. You don't, you don't have you don't have well, take care, you oh, guys, you and I enjoyed talking to you. And I'm getting ready to put my wish list together for my husband. All right, all right. We'll Merry see. Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas to you. Bye. Bye. Hey there, who's this? It's Josh hey. and John. This is Jeff. How are you? Hey, is it Jim or Jeff? Yeah. Oh, Jeff. Sorry. John, here's that. Okay. What's going on? Nothing. Who am I speaking with here? Uh, Josh and John. John. It is John. Hey, John and Josh. Um, and tell Brent hi for me as well. I hope, um, he's, I hope he's gone. I'm not sure if you remember me, Josh. You, uh, I, you ran into a friend of mine at the airport and called me for directions. Um, of course, we're all uh, friends on Facebook, and I have a house in Summit. Uh, New York. Yep. Oh, really? And, uh, do you remember this? Wait, now, when we, I called you for directions? You called me for directions. You ran into a friend of mine at the airport, um, one of the people that worked for United. And, I, of course, you know, I, I've been following you guys for some time. And, uh, you know, I have a farm here in Hackensack and one in uh, New York State as well. That does, and, I, that does ring a bell. What was I looking for directions for? Um, I'm trying to remember what you were doing. You were signing the book, I believe, which the book was phenomenal. One of the best and most enjoyable reads I've had in a long time. Oh, well, thank you. And, uh, I forget what it was, and you ended up, I think you just said, well, you give my friend Jeff a call, and you picked up the phone, and you're like, uh, hi, what's going on, how are you, and... Uh, we ended up talking about goats and chickens and everything else, and, and just having a good laugh. That, yeah, well, that, um, that sounds like me. I get I get I get bored easily in airports, so I'll, I pick up a call anyway. <laughs> you were taking pictures, of course. Everyone was coming up. Yeah. Um, the, the show was on, and everyone was doing really well. It was very very nice. Oh, that's and uh, uh, I've we've spoken before on Facebook. We're all friends on Facebook. Oh. And, What's your last uh, name? I, I missed it. They were you. They were doing tape. What is it? What is it? There's usually Christmas songs. Uh, some of my recordings for Christmas music are on right now. Oh, okay. Brent usually, and Brent usually um, uh, makes comments on my pictures of the garden and all the roses and everything else. Oh yes, that's beautiful. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I just wanted to call and see how you guys were holding up. How oh, I was heard... doing. How the dairy's doing. And uh, and just again, my sister Karen. Uh, and her husband Carmine are always up at the store and going on about how incredible every product you guys have is. Uh, is uh, in, and she was the manager of Barney's New York. So when I tell you that it, she said the place is amazing, that everything is fantastic, the products, you name it. Well, that it's absolutely a gold mine. Well, thank thank you. I mean, it's we take. It. Zero. Well, we'll take we'll take one percent credit for it, but ninety nine percent credit for it is that there are so many talented people in this area. I mean, John, you you grew up in Harry yeah. County, and and um, yeah. I mean, did you did you you always knew there were this many talented yeah. people? Yeah. Um, oh, it's amazing. Yeah. So I mean, I mean, we feel fortunate that we we've, we've been able to sort of collect everybody in one place and get it get it all out on one website just to help people. Sort of get more attention. That's all. That's all we've done. We don't. We just put it out there. But all the all the people around here, the farmers, the artisans, um, other food producers. I mean everything. I grew up there. I know what it all what's up there. We've been going there since uh, 
So they, do, I go down three or four times a day just to make sure that they have water and hay. So and scratch of some ears. Shores, shores, shores. Yep, I know. I, I this time of year because John's not milking. Usually, you know, during the the peak of kidding season, you're up at like two thirty three in the morning. Yep. Oh yeah. And uh, absolutely, with that many, how many are there in the herd now? There's 125 all together. Okay. So um, so whenever I would. What's the main breed? Um, I'm gonna. I'm trying to push for Nubian is, is my main breed, but I also have the Sonnens and Sables and Alpines, um, okay. over Hostleys, and now I, I just used a, a Golden Guernsey buck on on my young kids this year. So. Okay. Now, do you have any problems with frostbite and the Nubian ears up there? I haven't. No, actually, anybody that's got frostbite is, is, were some of the the Sonnens that have. I got one that has. Her ears were frostbitten, but she was born unexpectedly. But but she's fine. Okay. She's six or seven They'll years old now. They'll all heal up fine. Pardon? They'll all heal up fine. Yeah. So they, they sometimes I get frostbite when they're tiny, tiny. Usually when they're because because they're wet. I mean, if, oh, but wet. that you know that was before I was remove making sure I was there all the time and removing them right away. And so describe John. Describe so kidding season stars. What's your what's your average day because this. People will be amazed at what you go through every day when kid, when oh, season yeah. is in full swing. So once they start kidding, then you know I have to I try to be down there when they have their kids, so I can remove the kids from the mother right away. Um, they're dried off using the hair dryer and lots of paper towels, and then they're they're fed up a uh, heat treated colostrum or a powdered colostrum if if I can't get the the colostrum heat treated. Um, they're removed right away so they don't nurse off the mothers to help produce prevent. Um, CAE, which is um, caprine arthritis encephalitis, and that's passed from the, the mother to the kids by drinking um, the milk. Um, I'm trying to eradicate that from my herd. So you, you say you, so. Take, you take you take the, the kid away from away from the mom at birth because right. then you pasteurize the mother's milk. Right. To and avoid then, that. To avoid that. Yeah. But I mean, one, once I'm in full swing with with taking care of the kids and, and milking, um, my day will start at two and uh, and. By the time you go down every few hours to check on everybody, or or have to stay down there because there's seven or eight of them due in in one day. Yeah. Um, usually from from by the end of February till October, I'm usually in the barn ten to twelve hours a day, and then with everything else, I usually put in twelve to sixteen that. hours. More than that. For for a, a day. Oh, I think you're you do do more than that because every time I every time I look out the window, you're in the barn. I think it's like, you're like eight hours. <laughs> um, when you learn to just put a cot out there. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's still too cold in February. Yeah, <laughs> I'll, I'll get you an electric blanket for Christmas. Uh -huh. You can sleep out there. Yeah. That's a good Christmas gift there, absolutely, because season's coming up, isn't it? February fifteenth. February fifteenth is when the first ones are due. Okay. All right. Well, well, thank you for calling. Listen, it was a pleasure speaking to you guys. Tell Brent I said hi, and. Uh, <laughs> Just make sure you, you know who I am, Joshua. Go ahead and, and check out Facebook. And uh, I hope to stop up there soon. And maybe I'll stop by have a chance to come by and see you all, guys. Oh, well, we'd love to see you. Have a great Christmas. Merry Christmas, Jeff. Well. Good all luck right. with everything. Hang in there. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Okay. So, Joshua, I don't I think we're good. If I just okay, I got to remind everybody that why are we doing this today? We're doing this today because it's the last day for anybody who lives west of the Mississippi to order. Oh, Susan's probably watching. Susan, Susan Littlefield, you called in an order last night. 
here's your box. It's getting ready to go out. We have what well, this one's US boxes. The USPS. We have two UPS deliveries coming today. Mm -hmm. I think is this the first time ever in Sharon Springs? Probably. <laughs> the first I'm gonna say I'm gonna call it the first time ever in Sharon Springs, two UPS shipments going out of town in, in one day. And USPS. Two USPS too? Yeah. This is a friggin' metropolis <laughs> now. Yeah. <laughs> um so, any, so anybody who wants to call, I don't know, Farmer John, if you want to stay, you can stay. Or let's, God knows i got nothing left to talk about. But if you want to call, the number is 518-284-6039. And um, like I said, uh, today's the last day for anybody west of the Mississippi to order. Shop.beekman1802.com. Uh, if you want a safe holiday delivery, you got you got to get your order in today. we got... The full morning crew is here now packing. It'll go out today. In fact, seriously, if I lived any, if if you live anywhere, you should get your order in today because the snow is coming down. And even though we said tomorrow is the last East Coast day, with this snow, I think delivery is going to be delayed. So call today. Hang on, I'm going to see what it is. See, there's some questions here. Um, someone asked about using a fish tank bubbler instead of electric heaters. Um. Because I don't have anything else to do during the winter, I don't mind um, carrying the water to the goats. It keeps me down there and gets me to spend time with them. Um, I would imagine if you keep the water circulating there, it, it might help. But I usually run hose to the, the water and have a float. So, I mean, if it gets that cold in the barn, it's the hoses that are freezing that, that make it so so tough. So. so, I don't know about using the... The fish tank bubbler. Other than in, in a bucket, it's going to work So because you're keeping the water moving. Are you answering questions? Yeah. Joy Hendrick, I just saw you call. I missed your call. You, you can call back while we are talking to... Hi there. Who's this? Hi, Vanessa. Hi, Vanessa. How you doing? Good. Did you say hey, you had a question? I was calling regarding the uh, fruitcake. I have not had fruitcake in about 40, 45 years simply because my mother made us eat some at a friend's, at one of her friend's house, and it was so nasty. It was dry. So I ordered one yeah. just a few minutes ago. Please tell me that they're good fruitcakes. You made me order one just listening to you, Josh. Just listening to you. You made me order a cheese uh, fruit cake. Okay. Well, I hope you love it. I mean, I think it, we, we enough people love it that it, we know it's great. Um, but here's the thing: if you if you, if it's not dry, you know, it's it's like a cake, but it's also not that syrupy brown, you know, sticky fruit. Cake. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. It's not like that yucky stuff, is it? No, I was going to have John describe it, but John hasn't even had the fruitcake. Where do you, who are you? <laughs> I'm the one that stays in the, in, on the farm all the time. Um, but so it's, it's more like a cake cake. You know, it's a blonde cake. It's not as heavily spiced, and it has the dried fruits and nuts in it. Now, here's the thing. If it is too dry for you, what, uh, do, you, do, you like brandy, uh, brandy. do you like brandy or rum or cognac? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because that's the traditional, the fruitcake actually comes wrapped in cheesecloth because that's what they used to do. That was the original way that they used to preserve it. They would wrap the cake in cheesecloth, brush it with uh, cognac, brandy, rum, um, and they would do it every week or so. Whenever the cake started to dry out, they would keep brushing it with the alcohol, and that's what preserved it. It preserved the fruit. It preserved the, the cake itself. And uh, back in the day... Do you know the tradition of eating a wedding cake one year after your, your marriage? Right, right. You put it in the freezer? Well, that came because the first wedding cakes were fruit cakes. And, oh, okay. And they would preserve it with alcohol all year, and on the first anniversary, they would have a piece of their wedding cake, which was fruit cake. So if you keep brushing oh, okay. it with booze, it will last forever. So what I'm saying, if you get it and it's too dry for you, brush it with booze, you'll like it. If you still don't like it, brush it with more booze, and you'll love it. So, okay, I will definitely do that. But thanks for talking to me. Well, I hope you guys year. come back on TV. I do really miss your show and stuff. And congratulations on the race and all that good stuff. 
Well, thank you. Thank you very much, and I hope you have a great Christmas. Let us know if you don't like the fruitcake. I will. I definitely will. All right. Thank you guys have a nice holiday. Merry Christmas. All right, then. Bye. Hi, is this Joy? Yes, it is. Hey, Joy, it's Josh and John. Hey, John, look at you. You're like, Hi, I'm going to just flip my laptop, my um, iPad off so I can talk to you. Oh, yeah, because there's like a d d delay. Yeah, response. there's a delay. Hey, John, I'm, actually, not, I'm not very um, tech savvy, so it's like it either works or it doesn't work. But I was calling to say to you that I find that I have found you to be, my husband and I, very inspiring. We live on the coast of Connecticut, we, in, a, in a city we do not have a lot of land. After watching your show and, and looking on your website and so forth, we built raised beds. And we have enough of them that we have enough vegetables that last us, and we have an early season and a late season. Um, we have enough vegetables from May till October. Well, and that's as a result of watching you and what can be done and so forth. Oh well, that's so that's so nice to hear. We um, we appreciate that. And do you do any canning or preserving? Yes. As a matter of fact, all our Christmas gifts this year have all been. We did 44 pints of pickles, sweetened um, butter, uh, bread and butter pickles. Mm. We did apple butter for the first time. Oh, nice. And we did hot pepper jelly and the various different kinds of zucchini breads because I have friends who have gluten issues and don't want sugar and all of that. So um, we do. We enjoy It's something we enjoy doing together. So we did that as well. That's great. Um, I do have a question. Yeah. I don't understand why I am having a hard time with any kind of a root vegetables, vegetable. They're very puny, beets, carrots, anything grown under the ground. Potatoes we do great, but um, they, they're just so small. And Okay, what, 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 kind of dirt, what kind of dirt is in your raised beds? What kind of dirt? Well, the, I have the bottom of the... For, oh, and let me also say to you that I have a very bad back, and so my husband built these beds. They're four by eight, and they're, four, they're um, two feet high. Okay. Uh, we have some that are two feet high, and then we have others that are one foot high. The bottom of these beds don't have good dirt in them for a, a little bit of whatever. But I, I, I don't know. We, we add... Um, compost, cow manure, peat moss. We I use um, our leaves as mulch. Um, this year, this winter, we put in ryegrass mm -hmm. for the first time to winter over. Trying to get, I find I lose a lot of nitrogen. Do you lose a lot of nitrogen? Well, that's that can be the leaves doing that. Um, really? Yeah, you want to make sure that, you want to make sure that they chop up the leaves really fine so that they. So that they uh, disintegrate quickly and then put in a lot of manure at the same time. I'm thinking, what is it? What's your soil consistency? How does it feel? Um, I kind of use it in my hand. It feels I plant when it looks like chocolate cake in my hand. I I can't. T I don't use any instruments or whatever. I sort of go by feel. So yeah. it it looks like a chocolate cupcake. Okay, so here's uh, this is my question. So, when you say your the root vegetables are cutie, are they pushing themselves out of the ground or are oh. they underground and small? Underground and small. Okay, so that is that's she just thin, nutrition. She got thin and more. Yeah, do you thin? Yes, yes. Now, because that was something someone else I know said to me, you're not thinning them enough. So I thinned them. Do you know Jerry Baker's Grandma Putz's Garden Book? Have you ever heard of them? Yeah, yeah Jerry Baker. He gets these great books, yeah. And so I was reading in there, and so I that was this year, again, I thinned even more so than I had in the past. And they were better. But they weren't great. I'm gonna t I got I got a theory, but I'm gonna be right back. Hang on. Okay. <laughs>
Sounds like you're, you're as long as you're putting enough, you know, manure in there. Seems like they should be getting enough. And and planting the doing the the green cover crop. That's going to put a lot of nitrogen back in. There. Right. That was why I did it for this winter. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. I just was wondering, you know, because it's been a frustration for several years that I look at others neighbors um, crop size and in particular I just can't get a growth on uh, beets and anything underground so okay when do you when do you plant when do we plant um, I probably put my beets in at the beginning of May probably yeah, we are a whole nother time zone maybe two from you what here on the coast yeah. Time, so warmer, right, warmer. It's yeah. much warmer. And now we are getting snow today. We're part of the snowstorm that you're getting, but, so, but um, this is, it's this is the we don't get a frost until oh, at probably um, Thanksgiving. This is confusing to me because I mean a carrot. If you plant that early, it's just going to keep growing. By the okay. end. I've tried that. My husband has said to me, "You pick them too early." Then I heard if you if you're going to use the beet greens, you then you don't get a beet. So I planted separate beets and sep for beet greens and separate for growing beets, and that didn't work either. So okay. I just at a loss as to why I just can't get things to grow under the ground. <laughs> Okay, I'm, I'm going to try one thing, and I don't know if this will work. I mean, it sounds like an, I would, if this, normally if the soil will work compacted, they would be pushing themselves out of the ground. Right, but, right. But um, maybe they're still just having trouble reaching. So I would, I would, water. yeah, make sure you water it. Less, less yeah. peat moss, because the peat moss can actually cake and become hard when it dries out. Yes, I've noticed. Yes. So that's that's sort of like growing in rocks, you know. When, once it gets hard, so I would leave the peat moss out of it. Um, okay. A little less manure. Um, less manure. Yeah, a little less manure, and then a little. If you if you have any sandy soil where you are, put a little sandy soil in. Uh huh. Sandy? Are you kidding? I live at the beach. <laughs> Yeah, I, well, you gotta worry about salt then. Yeah, you don't, you don't, yeah, you don't, yeah I know. Yeah. I'm kidding. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, if, there's, if you have any sand, just so it's looser. And then the last okay. thing. Oh, this is the, when you plant carrot and radish seeds. Yeah, radishes too. Yeah. Yeah, when you Eat. don't push a hole with your finger because then you're compacting the bottom of the hole. Okay. And that that, that it doesn't get them off to a great start. They start growing up instead of down. So put, okay. put your seeds down, and then if you can scatter a fine layer on top, so just mm -hmm. spread the seeds evenly, and then put a, a fine layer of you know very fine soil on top of it, mm -hmm. and let it start that way, and then you can add mm -hmm. a little more on top as it's growing. And but, start them in the beds, not in not start them in uh, transplant them out. Oh no, yeah, never no never transplant them. I would yeah, don't transplant. Okay. Do you change uh, the variety? I ever have, but I was just, you know, yeah. I was just, like, as I said, trying everything I could think uh, that I could think of and read about, and I could not figure out why this was happening. Anyway, I will. You, oh, you're just so inspiring. Um, my sister is actually a neonatal um, cow deliverer person. <laughs> when when um, the the cows st have trouble. Yep. She goes out to the farms where she lives and delivers these baby cows and many times has them living in her basements and so forth. So I can appreciate what Farmer John goes through from a cow perspective. I've never really experienced goats, but I admire all of you for what you've accomplished and what you pass on in your spirit. And I'm going to let you go. All of you have happy holidays. Love your holidays. Thank, thank you very much. Thanks, have Joy. a great Christmas. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I hope she can figure out her, uh, figure out well, what's going on. Well, enough, she has different varieties. She uh, yeah, have the same seed all the time. I kind of try to. Oh, yeah. It pulls up, pulls yeah. up the trees. Well, she, she's probably still watching. So, yeah, if if you're doing the same variety, do change up the variety of beets, change up the variety of carrots, and they'll pull different nutrients from the soil. Okay, let's see. Hi there. Who's this? Hey there. It's Sally Newhart. I'm your old gardener at the <laughs> Oh, I know Sally. Sally. Your gardener expert from down in New Orleans. How are you? 
I'm fine, thanks. How are you doing? How are you guys doing after this night? I, I think we're doing pretty. How do I look? Excellent. Excellent. How's the weather there? Um, well, it stopped snowing now, but it's, it's still snowing finer. It, here. Finer, but no, we've had a ton of snow. How about with you? Actually, they say we had a slight frost here last night. I have to go out and check the tomatoes when I get myself motivated. Uh, well, not much. That's, that's, we don't get quite the weather. My daughter's up in Poughkeepsie, and I just checked the Hudson Valley report. All the schools are closed there today. Wow. I mean, I, you're not going to get any sympathy here with your slight frost. <laughs> I know. Nor am I. Well, I don't know. You guys get tomatoes. I've been struggling to get tomatoes for the past bunch of years. Because what zone, I forget. What zone are you here. in again? What's, yeah. Sally, what zone are you in? Mm -hmm. What growing zone are you in? Oh, I'm in growing zone 10. Oh, right. So we had, I don't know if people remember this, but a few years ago we had did something with William Sonoma where we had um, ten seeds that we were having everybody grow all around the country, and so we we had official heirloom gardeners, Beekman heirloom gardeners from each of the different zones. Yeah, and I was your zone ten from here. Yeah, and and so Sally was our zone ten official heirloom gardener, and I learned so much from I learned so much from you in zone nine and zone eight <laughs> because oh. because it's 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 almost like a completely flip flop schedule from us. Completely. It's, it's enough to make you crazy, especially if you grew up in zones five and six. Yeah, because it's hard to know when when do you plant tomatoes down there? Um, as it turns out, the absolute best time is to start your seeds like in, in August and September and put them in in October, November, you know, put the plants in. And they kind of go through the winter and then in the spring, they make tomatoes like crazy. Okay, that's. I mean, cool. spring here would be like February. Yeah, yeah that's something. Cause yeah, yeah, for us it's just that you know they you start them you start them cool and then you know or warm cool and then they just go warmer 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 produced and die at the frost and you've got to you got to nurse them through like three different weather changes. Yeah, it's 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 interesting, but the the problem is tomatoes don't set fruit on less than seventy degrees, and Starting in about late June, sometime we don't see 70 degrees again until September. Yeah, it's it's way above that the whole time. Yeah, because it has to be it has to be 70, 70 at night, right? Uh, yeah, or any time that it would please we just that drop the 70. We'd love to see 70 down here in this month, and you go to sleep in 80 degree weather. Yeah, I mean, and up here we just complain about we you know we need. Uh, you know, we need hotter, hotter, hotter for tomatoes, but you guys, it, it too, gets too hot for tomatoes. Yes, we do. Oh, man. Yes, we do, but all winter long, we have the best greens, you know, the broccoli, all the cruciferous family, broccoli and See, we, sprouts and kale and collards and, we're oh, gosh, of, right? We're hit, or miss, we're hit or miss with the broccoli and the cauliflowers because we have to plant ours you know, when it's it's cool out, but then it gets hot so fast that we never get the nice cool. compact heads of broccoli. Yeah. Um, and our, our Brussels sprouts weren't that great this year either. But Really? Well, John doesn't care about the Brussels sprouts. Okay. Yeah, Ron doesn't either down here, so I just don't understand. They're my favorite. They're great. Why do you roast them? I roast them, and, I, oh, I started doing them, and actually everyone has liked this. I take the butter in, a, in a, like a saucepan, a little bit of butter, a decent amount of garlic, and maybe some, like, Tony Sachery's, some, you know, Creole seasoning. Yeah. Just put them in on a really low temperature and just sort of steam cook them. It's... It's delicious. It takes like a half an hour, 45 minutes for them, maybe an hour. Do you cover, so, are, are you talking stove top or oven? Stove top. You probably could do them in the oven, like roasting beef. And you, you cover them or uncover them? Yeah, yeah covered. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, well, that does sound good. I'll try that. Oh, yeah, it's delicious. Everybody, everybody that doesn't like Brussels sprouts that I know now eats them that way. I'm going to make some for John and bring them over to him. Yeah, see if he likes them that way. It's, it's 
it's the way everybody does cabbage down here. And so I decided, well, if they eat it that way, why shouldn't they eat it with little baby cabbages? Yeah, same family. Yeah, exactly. So have have you guys thought about doing those hoop houses? Oh, have, yeah, the, the the hoop houses. Um, yeah, over the over the things, so that all winter you can go out and harvest the stuff doesn't keep growing, but it stays and it doesn't freeze. Well, I, I it, we, it wouldn't go all winter here, but it would it would definitely extend it. I I do have remember I I have hoops that go over the beds in the plastic, but like this fall we were touring so much I didn't get a chance to get them up. I didn't even clean out the garden this year. It's terrible. Um, oh, but yeah, that's I have okay. Done, I have done it in the past. It works very well. The only issue we have is that we are in an extremely high wind area, and uh, it can, you know, it rips it rips it to shreds sometimes. Yeah, that would be a problem. Yeah. So yeah, well, I kept track of your touring schedule. I hadn't even thought about how that would affect your gardening cleanup, but you're right. Yeah. Well, we we always try to schedule the tours. You know, for we try to do it for fall because that's that's kind of our quietest time, but. But yeah, that means I don't get to clean out the garden, which yeah. means now everything is frozen yeah, in place. It'll, it'll be there in the spring for you. <laughs> I know, but isn't that so depressing when you want to get out there and start and you got to pull up last year's frozen cabbage roots? Uh, yeah, that is kind of yucky. All right. Well, well, I hope you have a great holiday, Sally. Definitely will. I hope you all do too. Love you guys. Love. Oh, oh, and Ron says say hello to Poker Spot for him. Love okay. I will. Power John do that. All right. Okay. <laughs> See you later. Take care. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. Oh look, John, there's a truck. I wonder who that is. Is that your one of your? I don't know. Let me see. Yes. There's a truck out here. Are we expecting anything? Yeah. Van Alken. Yeah, Van Alken. Yes. All right, everybody. The cookbooks are here. Some people's orders were waiting on cookbooks. Um, and you're, they'll be waiting no longer. I think that was one of the last things we were waiting on. We were kind of behind on that and the poke and blows. Oh, <laughs> one's my, oh, my, one's Michael was making? Yeah, yeah. Um, he was just waiting for cars to go by so he can get out of the truck. Yeah, we're, we're watching the truck driver to see. I don't know that he can get around back. He's coming in the front door. Shipment of cookbooks right arriving right now. I think it's how exciting this is, John. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. hey there, you got our shipment of cookbooks? That's what he's got. He's good for it. Alright. Alright. Okay. We're gonna get them in here. Are you bringing them in the front? We're going in the back. Sled going home. I heard this. I got a sitting there. Oh, it's a guy's sled. No, it's a big. What is it? It's a big semi, isn't it? Yeah. I see there was a question from Dorothy Hayes. Yes, Dorothy, I was crocheting and scarves. Um, they'll be available through the store in January. So I've got to get back to the to the yarn shop and get some more. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna plug your sister's place again. So a lot of people say, you know, when when I, we're, it's, you're always so busy in summer and I can't get a place, I can't get a room at the American, I can't get a room in the fall because all the leaf keepers. Um, the best time to come here is in winter because you get a great deal at the American Hotel, and this is when the sap is running. No, sap doesn't start running. Well, until February. February. That's what I mean, winter. Not, Starts, yeah, not now. Okay. I still consider, do you don't consider February winter? Well, that's when spring. That's when the kids come. Oh, oh my God. It's so not spring. It's not spring here until July. Um, so, so it come February, March, when, the, when the, the American Hotel opens again, right before Easter, um, get a room then. The rooms are really cheap. Sap house, or the, I keep saying sap house, stone house. Um, John's sister's place had amazing maple syrup, maple syrup products, maple syrup, cotton candy, yep. which I'd never seen before in my life. And then they do these pancake breakfasts every Sunday, which are packed. Saturday and Sunday, yep. Starting at 8. 
Eight to one. Does your dad still, is he going to do the... My dad will probably still be up there, too, so... Usually my nieces are there, and one of, usually they usually get so busy that a couple of my other sisters end up helping, too, so... Um, yeah, so, yeah, everybody, you know, people that come down the farm tours, my mom and dad always do the farm tours with, with Farmer John, they lead that, and then, so if anybody comes up for the weekend and goes and has a breakfast at Stonehouse, then you meet John's dad. Yep. Your mom doesn't go help, though, does she? Once in a while, she's gone. Does she go? Yeah. Your mom's so quiet. Yep. Your mom's so nice. How's church? Are they going to church? Yep. I came, I, we drove by Sunday, and it was, there's nobody, it's like two cars, because the snow. Yeah. But, uh, well, that's good. That's good. Nothing new? No. Oh. Look at this. It's like... Wait, what production values? All right. Let's see. Hi there. Who's this? Hey, Josh. It's Sandra Packey. Oh, my gosh. Sandra. How are you? I'm doing good. It's Sandra. It's me and John here. So... Sandra. Uh, well, hi, John. Hi. I, I love seeing all the things that you do with the goats. I had goats in Georgia uh, several times and love them. They are always so entertaining. They are awesome. I just want people to so, Sandra, when I, when, in my very first job in advertising at Atlanta at JW, JW, JWT, how old was I? I was like 12. And, uh, yeah, 12 and extremely quiet. Was that quiet, really? Yes. Uh, of course, at the time, I had no idea what you were doing with your night. Yeah, That's yeah, why yeah. you were so exhausted during the day. Yeah, yeah I, I kept my sort of... that. Well, that was my the birth of Aqua. My drag alter ego was in Atlanta, but nobody knew about it down there. Yes, right. Well, until later. I mean, we did know later. But uh, I still have a picture of you. And uh, Kimberly Jewell and myself at a New Year's performance when you were so sick um, that formed. You were, I don't, you had the flu or something. Oh, that's so, that's right. Look, at, I, I I was I had the stomach flu and I was still performing in drag. I, that but me. you were, but you were beautiful nonetheless. Of course I was. That takes about, that was a little all work. <laughs> I was, well, but it was I'm actually I'm actually in my car, so I can't see what you guys are doing. I've been watching you off and on all morning and last night, and uh, I said all I thought to myself that all those years in advertising with the sleep deprivation were great training for you for this marathon. That's true. Think of how many all nighters we did at, at JWT. I, I know, I know. I can remember. Uh, well, maybe not in that particular building, but over at uh, Tower Place, waking up, everybody just fell asleep. We were sitting on the floor talking, and everybody just fell asleep where they were. So when people came, just laying in the floor, or halfway in one room, and you yeah. know, out in the hall, kind of thing, and everybody just fell asleep because we only had like maybe an hour or so um, before the workday started again. That so, that's true. Strange, it strange time. I'm telling you, advertising is almost as hard as farming. I know John will not believe that, but advertising, everybody always thinks that I worked in the city, I would like go to work at 9 and come home at 5, and it was, advertising was a 24-7 job. It yes, was, absolutely, absolutely, and it, it, it's, it's a slow death by absolute exhaustion every day. It is, and it's sort of like, you know, it's a, it's a service, it's like being a waiter. Being in advertising is like being a waiter because everybody's it's a service industry. Right, exactly, you, exactly. You just, all your clients well, tell you what to do constantly. So you're, are you doing okay, yeah. Sandra? Yeah. You're doing okay? Your health okay? I'm fine. I'm doing great. I'm living in Florida. I'm in Jupiter, Florida today, and I'm looking. I'm in my car, so I'm looking at the temperature right now. It's 69 degrees. You don't have to tell me that, Sandra. That's just me. <laughs> yes, yes, I do. <laughs> that, that's just me. What, what was the temperature coming in today? You didn't love minus ten. But it's, no, it's minus. It's actually a little. It's actually a little cool for this time of year. Oh, oh, oh! Don't but. even. Hey, you know who? Merry I, Christmas. <laughs> hey, you know who I saw down in uh, when we were just down there last month? We were down in Fort Myers. I saw uh, ML. 
Oh, did you? Yes. She was uh, how about that? that? I haven't seen her in years. Yeah, well, she knows. She's doing well? She's based down in Fort Myers, yeah. Uh, well, gosh. Um, hey, do you, would you share a phone number with me? Oh. Uh, at some other time? Yeah, sure. Just email us to the website. After or the share meeting. mine back with her. Can you see my phone number displayed? Oh, I don't know. I, I don't, that's te too technical for me. No, it just, no. Not that I can figure out. What? Just. Do you have something to write on? Yeah, but I don't want to do it because everybody's going to hear. Well, I don't care. All right. Okay. Here, here, everybody. This. Here's Sandra's number, everyone. Okay. <laughs> Wait, do that one more time. 404-886-5229. All right, I got it. I'll give you, I'll give you. Wait, when have you seen Bill and Jill? Or have you seen them? Oh, I saw them last fall, I think. Okay. He, he's, Bill's, look, well? Bill's looking really old and haggard. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know, I, I'm desperately hoping he's listening. All right, Sandra, I'll call you after the new year. Okay. Call me to share that with me. I will. All right, Sandra. All right. So good to hear your voice. You too. Have fun. Have a great holiday. I'm sorry to, to jump in on the goats here. I do love goats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for a little bit of this thing, Good. Perfect. All right. We'll talk soon. Bye. Okay. Bye. Oh. No, I think I think we're good. I gotta charge this phone. Anybody to comment in here? Oh, Tamara John question. Yeah, well, I already answered. Oh, you already answered that? Oh. I think one of Now you're stuck with me, and I don't have much to say. And I can't use a laptop either. Hello, Norway Sofin. You what? I'm reading people's names. All right, I just want everyone to know, Sarah Heschelis Hesh in Brighton, Michigan, your package is done and going out. Yep, somebody goes to Stonehouse Farms. Tammy Carey. Patty, yeah, Patty yep, Tim. For Patty and Tim, yep. Oh, this goes too fast. Just thinks he doesn't like tech. I don't know where she at. Oh, I see that. Okay, so oh, was too fast for me. just getting people up. Oh, Joy Munoz, hi. Yup, I remember when you came with Melinda. Yup. I remember. Okay, okay, people. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Paul in Newtown, Pennsylvania, your package is done and going out. Nicole Shealy, uh, Lexington, South Carolina, package done and going out. We just did Sarah's. Megan Kraut. Oh, Green Bay, Wisconsin. What? Oh, go say hi to Ma. Megan Kraut, your package is done, going out. On one of on one of our two UPS pickups today. Fancy. That's why that's why this post office will never close, right? Really. <laughs> I know. We should get a, a fruit cake or something from the postal service. Oh, 
Somebody posted about the Beat Geeks. Hello, Beat Geeks. Christine Hoff, Ovid, Michigan. Package done. Heading out today. I don't, it's too heavy. Oh, no. No, it's too small for a fruitcake. I won't, I won't shake your package. <laughs> <laughs> that would be mean. Okay, William Van Patten. Bethel Park, Pennsylvania. Your package is done and going out. Carmen Nava. Escondido. Escondido, California. Package done, going out. Kathleen Malgieri, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Package done and going out. Did you see the pile back here? Let me just come show you the pile. Hi. Hi there, you call for John? Yes. Hi. Hey John, how are you? Good. I have to um get going on my day, but I saw you pop up there and I had to say hello. I um I just love your whole persona, your sweetness, you're so um you just seem like such a kind person. It makes sense that you'd be working with animals. Yeah. I was wondering, are you interested at all in dealing with sheep? No. <laughs> no? No. <laughs> Why not? I Why not sheep? sheep? Sheep, well, the two sheep that I raised this year, um, we won't talk about where they are now, but they, they, were, <laughs> they were pretty good because we raised them with, with the goat babies. So, but no, oh, I've right. never been really interested in sheep. I grew no, up with cows. Okay. Well, I'm I'm a crier like you, so I um I feel a camaraderie with you. Yeah. I appreciated that when it, when you started crying on the show. I I'm kind of the same way when I talk about my kids and uh -huh. um I do the same my real kids. <laughs> yeah. I um I'm the same way, so I really appreciated that. <laughs> Do you have animals too? What's that? Do you have animals too, other than than your children? Well, I just lost my two cats. Oh. But I, I I hope to get some more soon. But um, right now I don't have any animals, so oh. soon soon. Well, you have a wonderful holiday, John. Thank you, and you too. Merry Christmas. Okay, you too. Bye bye. Bye bye. Oh, we don't know. Did, oh, did you? You got voicemails. Oh. All right. Are there any new ones? I just need to refresh all the time. Yeah. Oh, we should do a live show every morning. What do you think, John? Yeah. 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 Oh, Princess Google, what a nice bunch of people the Beat Geeks are. That's definitely true. This is the new shipment. Be helpful with this. Wow. <laughs> literally, literally just came off the truck, and now there's a customer in the store bringing it to. You got them both ringing. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, you want to talk to Josh and John? Oh, you just want to. You have a question about an order? Okay, one moment. I get put for Josh John. Okay, one second. We're getting confused with the some calls for orders, some calls for John. You're getting <laughs> okay. Hi. What's your name? Carolyn. Hi, Carolyn. Oh, so if you're watching on your screen, it's it's delayed. So you're talking to us now, but you'll see it in a few minutes. 
<laughs> That's fine. No worries. How's it going today? Good. It's going good. A little bit, little bit tired, but it's going good. <laughs> I'm sure. Well, you guys started this telethon yesterday or today? Uh, last night at 6 o'clock. Oh, wow. And you're going until tonight at 6. Yep. So, well, full 24 hours. I did take a two-hour nap at 4 this morning. <laughs> good for you. <laughs> good. So what's your, what's your name again? Carolyn. Carolyn. You got a question for John? I do. I have a couple, actually. Um, I'm an animal science student, and I actually have a few goats of my own. So I was just wondering um, what your background is and how you um, decided you wanted to start your own goat dairy. I grew up on a cow dairy. My, my parents had cow dairy um, for years, um, plus a little other, other, few other things in between. Um, I lived in, 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 the, in the city, Albany, for, for a number of years. And then I wanted to get out of there, and I moved back back out this way. And the, the first place I moved back to, the people that I bought the place from had had goats before. And I says, well, since the barn's already set up for goats, I guess I'll get a couple. So I started out with five, and now I have 125. So that's over a 13-year period. Very nice. So did you, did you go to college at all, or do you have a degree in anything? I have a two-year degree in liberal arts, social sciences from from SUNY Colville. So, okay, very nice. But I, but I do do a lot of fun. things with SUNY Colville with the animal department, um, with Dr. Cindy Shelley. Um, I usually get my interns through her. Um, oh. Interns have been very valuable. Um, my intern this past year, Julie Lant, um, she was very valuable. She helped me help me raise my kids. And then I have another oh one all set up to, to start again in the next semester. Oh, that's great. I had no idea you did interns. That would have been awesome. <laughs> yep. Yeah, they get, they get 12, 13 cool. credits for it. Very nice. Yes, so it. do you have any, what like recommendations would you have for someone that's looking to start your own dairy? I just have three milking does right now, and it's something that I'd really like to expand, but I kind of don't know where to begin. Start with ag and markets. Your, your ag and markets. Because that that because that's what you'll have to go through in order to become a you know a grade A dairy to be able to s s to sell milk or or make products. Um, and you know what else? This is what else Ag and Markets is really good at. We use Ag and Markets a lot. Um, so if we need you know like when we need an ice cream or when we're trying to make yogurt or when we're trying to make any product, we go to Ag and Markets and say, hey, who's making this product in the area? So Ag and Market knows what the demand is for different products. So they'll say like. Oh yeah, so and so makes you know feta cheese, and he can't make enough of it. So you know, there's plenty of demand for for more feta. So Ag and Markets can give you a good idea of what to do with your with your milk too. Yeah, before you get too big, make sure you have a have a market for your milk, whether you're going right. to try to do it yourself or if you're going to try to sell it. Okay. Yeah, that's really helpful. Thank you. Especially for goats, because there's no unlike you know cow dairies where there's a truck that goes around. You know, right goes around and picks up your milk. There's no truck that comes around and buys your milk as a goat jar. You have to, you have to find what you're going right. to do with that milk. Right. Because it takes a lot more goat's milk to, to equal, you know, a lot more goats to equal how much milk, the same amount of milk you're going to get from a cow. So ten, 10 goats for one cow. So think of how many <laughs> goats you would end up having to have to make as much as a, as a cow dairy would. So. Right. I mean, I think there's a huge, there's a big hole in the market for a goat milk Yogurt. Um, we've we've just had a really? challenge, challenge to find a place nearby that can that can make it with us. But uh, but I think you know yogurt is so. If you could do a Greek goat milk yogurt, uh, it would sell like crazy. That would be wonderful. There's a big dairy. Up, I'm in State College, Pennsylvania, right now, and there's a big um, local dairy that does. They do like like a drinkable yogurt, and it's it's incredible. They're always <coughs> excuse me. They're always sold out whenever I uh, go to the farmers market. Yeah, that's, that's definitely that's a good product. Maybe, maybe next year we'll find a way to do it. it was, we just couldn't find the producer this year. So. Well, good luck okay. to you. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. It was nice talking to you both. Well, you too. too. Merry Happy holidays. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye. I did see another one here. We could replace Kathy Lee and Hoda. Yeah. That's what they. Who said that? Jack Sicka. Oh. Where, where's our, where's our, where's our wine? Where's our wine? Seriously, did you bring we need, we need a mimosa now, huh? Oh, that sounds good.
Here, do you want to? Here, do you want to put the stuff? Just put it right on that table there. So, well, I'm all set. Oh, you're so, all set. Okay. Hang on, I'm gonna grab yeah, grab somebody. Okay. Um, Donna or Megan? Megan or Megan? Here, let's should we let's do a customer interview. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think this is our first customer interview. Our, oh, yeah, I guess I was going to say, are we even open yet? Yeah, we're open. Oh, oh that's nothing. Hi. Hi. So, <laughs> so what's your name? Kathy Bell. Kathy, where are you, where are you coming from? Cooperstown. You come from Cooperstown. Have you been here before? Yes, you've been here yes. before. Yes. We've met before. Yes, we have. Yeah. Then what are you doing over there? Well, actually, I had to go to Amsterdam this morning to see staff in our Amsterdam office. Oh, is it the weather so bad? It's not bad. Do you have four wheel drive? Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, what'd you buy? I bought. Oh, the the uh, this is Warren. This is uh, the Big Man 1802 Mixologist. His new cookbook. It's not online yet, but you can get it in the store. And right. the new. Did you, could you feel how old this was? Yes. The the, the, the cold off the truck <laughs> cookbook. <laughs> Oh, and Paul will love this. Oh, oh yeah, the goat, the goat. Uh, <laughs> have you seen this, John? The goat T-shirt. Hipster Ryan drew that goat. Actually, drew that picture of the goat. You know what I like about it? It's asymmetrical. We didn't print it right on the front. We printed it sort of off to the side. I like that. That's, that's what hipsters do. They're not. They're not traditional. And right, a mug. And a Beekman mug, and then a bunch of little mini tubs of butter. You got one every season. Yes, I did. Awesome. Great stocking stuffers. Oh, fantastic. Well, thank you. Normally we check out here, but now we're going to be super fancy and check out. <laughs> Look at this high tech. It's crazy. Hi. And Terry Button uh, is here. She just brought us some quiches. Oh, wow. Okay. So should I tell her to come through the other Yeah, way? come around the back way. John, do you want some quiche? Sure. What was that, the sound? Uh, no, that was just that was the power. So we have a battery. <laughs> so if anybody's brave enough to to brave the elements, come on down and uh, do a little Christmas shopping today. We're busy in the back, but not busy in the front because the weather's weather's not cooperating. But we're never. What is it? What is today? Wednesday, Tuesday? Tuesday. Tuesday. We're never busy on Tuesday. Sharon Springs is only busy on the weekend. Hi. Hi. We brought you too. Hi. We a bunch of people here. So look at we got quiche. No, I didn't know that was anything. Yeah. <laughs> oh. You didn't know you were on camera. No. What, what did you think? Have you been watching from home? Yeah, it's off and on. I went to bed. But you guys on must, your own. Must be nice. But I brought you bacon and onion with the black cheese in it. Oh my god. Okay. So okay. Kelly owns the New York House Hotel. Or it's ben, Bre Bre ben Breakfast. I don't know why. <laughs> it's been a long. I'm sure it has. <laughs> 12, 20, 40 hours. Um, so she owns the New York Ben Breakfast, and she is famous for this quiche. It's come smell. See, if you if you came and shopped, you could smell quiche. <laughs> oh <laughs> do, you want a, do you want a quiche? No, thank you. you sure? I'm sure. <laughs> um, so Kelly is famous for this quiche. Tell us, tell us again, what's in the onions? It's sweet onions, bacon, and Beekman black cheese. Beekman black cheese. And um, the crust is amazing. It's an oil crust, right? Yeah. And it's always it's super crispy. And, and so if you come stay, you do this on weekends, though. No, I do it every day. You do it every day? Mm -hmm. When? Oh my God. It doesn't matter when you stay. Keisha's breakfast. And okay, so how do they get a room? Where do they go to? They can go to www.thenewyorkhouse.com. New York, the the newyorkhouse.com. Yep. Or they can call five one eight. 518-284-6027. And so now is a slow time for everybody. It is. In Sherman Quite. Springs. So are you going to stay open through the whole season? We are. Okay. We live there so we can. We have guests for Christmas this year. Oh, you do? We, we do. Who's coming? We have guests coming to visit family in town, so they're coming and staying with us from Sunday through Wednesday. So that'll be fun. Much better than staying with family. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, I always tell everybody I'll take the family you don't want. They're always better behaved for someone else. Yeah. <laughs> so true. Look at she brought quiche and you brought one for the people in the back. I did, I brought two. Oh my god. 
Okay, this is what it's like to live in Sharon Springs. Did you see the food we got last night? I did. That's why I didn't come over last night. Until right. this morning, but I figured it was after breakfast and sort of coming into lunch. Maybe everybody you got coffee this morning. I saw. So I yeah. said, okay, now it's my turn. I'll take it down now when everybody else maybe has forgotten. <laughs> <and I'm sure. laughs> okay, yeah, I know. By this afternoon, it's going to be a desolate year old story. But all that, we had all that food last night, and by the time, so like about 2 in the morning, I was like, okay, I'm going to go get something to eat. It was gone. It was gone. Everybody... Clear, clear off every crumb of it. Well, I knew I had to bring two because when I brought you guys one to the farm, the two of you ate the whole thing in the afternoon. So I thought I'd better bring two or nobody's going to get any. <laughs> and we didn't share any with John either. We didn't share with John. No. John never gets anything. John doesn't get any no. cheese. What else did <laughs> you get? I don't get anything. Okay. Here, John, take a fruitcake. They don't, there's only 16 left. Probably isn't that many left now. You better like it. <laughs> you better like it. <laughs> if you don't like it, you can sell it on eBay. I have to tell you, we made your pizza the other night out of the cookbook. Oh, the, oh the, that's our the favorite. Blue cheese, pear, blue and cheese. Yeah. Everyone loves it. Bags. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, that one was really good. Yeah, that Big or small? Small. One. Two. Thank you. So you've been watching? Yep. Kind of fun. Right? Watched for a while last night. Like I said, I went to bed. And I got up again this morning and turned it back on and checked you out and saw what was going on. And was I? What time did you, did you tune back in? Um, probably nine o'clock. I just I had nine stuff to do. I had to clean the house. Nine o'clock. I have to clean house. I have to finish making Christmas presents. Oh. Do you have any time? No. Oh yeah, Sunday. Sunday. Yeah, oh, that's, in on oh yeah. This is next one. Oh, so that's what I was going to say. So if you want to come to Sharon Springs in the winter, which is going to be, I think is going to be beautiful this winter because we've got this much snow already. I don't think it's going anywhere. Um, yeah, I'll sign. And, uh, but, so what happens in the winter here is everything closes down. So you can't get a room in the American because they close from President's Day usually till Easter. But you guys are open year-round. So if you want to come during that time, New York House is the place to stay. We are. To Paul. To Paul. Okay, I got. I got all right, one of these. I'm gonna go. We'll oh, chat with John for a second. Oh, all right. Hey, John. All right. <laughs> I see your husband every Sunday because we play volleyball. I know. He tells me I'm not a volleyball no. player. No. Nope. He said must love volleyball. He said I gotta get through a couple of dates and then I'll have it. See. I don't love volleyball. You don't, don't you play? You don't play volleyball? No, I have a bad knee and I'm not very good. So I decide that it's not worth risking the I, knee. I thought I saw you there one time. A couple times okay. I have peace and once in a while. <laughs> Not my thing. <laughs> I got a, I got an artificial hip when I play. Yeah, but I'm not very good, so sometimes it's better to stay home here. Kind of backyard volleyball anyway. Yeah. So the one time I went, somebody beat me in the head. Yeah. Okay. The ball. They weren't very nice. Thank you so much. Somebody would like to Okay. All right, who wants to talk to Josh, Kelly, and John? Hey guys, this is Aaron Snow calling from Delaware. I saw uh, Kelly pop up and I just wanted to call in and say hi to everybody. How are you? Good, how are you guys? Good, we're doing good. When was the last time you were up here? Oh my gosh, the last time I was up there was uh, in the summertime. Um, we're hoping to get back up sometime this winter, um, but I really wanted to, uh, while everybody's watching, I wanted to call in, especially with uh, with you all standing there and let everybody know what great service we get at uh, the New York House. Uh, Kelly and Bruce are fantastic hosts. Uh, we stayed there. We've also stayed uh, with... Uh, with um, Doug and Garth over at the American, but we love getting up to Sharon Springs. We love seeing you guys, and it's so amazing uh, to see you guys doing so well. Thank you so much. We'll look forward to seeing you soon, I hope. Absolutely. Oh my gosh, Josh, I just saw, I know there's a delay. I just saw you pop back up on my screen. That, that sweater is outrageous. <laughs> oh, my mom made this sweater. Isn't it great? She did. And, and then I got my pajamas on, although I didn't get to sleep much. <laughs> and, oh, I, I, you I saw your Christmas jammies. That's awesome. So when you stayed with Kelly and Bruce, did you um, get to try this amazing black and uh, onion quiche? She 
she puts on such a spread, and I mean, it's not just. I mean, she's obviously a fantastic cook. I don't. We did get the quiche. We uh, we got the breakfast pizza. Everything was so amazing, and uh, it wasn't just the food, though. I mean, the service is fantastic. We met some of the most wonderful people there. Um, both times that we we were up there, uh, we came up for the uh, for the spring festival, and then we were up again later, uh, just for a little uh, little weekend getaway. Um, but it was so amazing how sweet and kind everyone was uh, while we were there. We made some really, really great friends while staying at the New York house, uh, one of which is who told me uh, you guys were uh, doing a live show right now, and that's why I tuned in. Oh, well, great. Thank you. I mean, you're so, you're so right about Sharon Springs. I mean, everybody that comes up for the, the festivals, they come back year after year. They start making friends amongst themselves. You know, I was talking with you know, Linda Leonardi. Mm -hmm. Talking with Linda Leonardi last night, she called in, and, and uh, she called it Beyond Beekman, which I which I love. And so it's like cause now they have a whole circle of friends that vacation yeah. other yeah. places. They they're they're all good good friends, and and they all met here in Sharon Springs. Yeah, one of my uh, dear friends is Jack Sicka. He's he's watching you guys now too. Yeah. Uh, Jack's Jack's amazing. I was gonna ask you, you baked something for us once, and was it a pie? You baked something else besides peach. Oh, for your wedding, I did two pies. What were they? I did a strawberry rhubarb, and I did a blueberry goat cheese and basil pie. That's, yes, yes. <laughs> Kelly is, I mean, an amazing, amazing baker. Yeah, that's the one. Yes, she so, did. So, okay, I'm going to be Sharon Springs' uh, travel guide now. Like I said, in February, March, it's hard, you, it's hard to come up here and get a room, and yet it's one of the best times to come because it's so pretty. So you can come stay at uh, the New York house and then have the pancake breakfast at John's sister place on Sunday. So oh, that's so good. You have oh, quiche on Saturday, yes, pancakes well. on Sunday, uh, thenewyorkhouse.com, and the Stonehouse restaurant, right? Stonehouse Farms. Gosh, why can't I get your sister's place right? Is it? Um, Stonehouse Farms is John's sister's place? Yep. They, have, they do pancake located? breakfast from the end of February through, through April. We're we going to stop there when we, uh, when we get come back up there. We'll take you over there. 18, it's really good. Yeah. All right, so we'll see you again. you got to come up you come up in February March. Absolutely. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. Merry Thank Christmas. You too. Bye-bye. Thanks. Okay. This smells so good. Okay, so I started the day with, with donuts. Well, actually, I started the day with cookies from last night. So you probably have to eat. <laughs> And, uh, and then I went to Fresh Donuts. Now I'm going to Keish. Keish, yeah. I think, I bet you my Rosemary will come in with something. Oh, I'm sure, but I, I figured I'd come in in the middle. Yeah, you, yeah. Oh, yeah. Keish is sort of in the middle. Of the it is. This is brunch. Yeah. yeah. Rosemary will have lunch. Freeze so. up, but I figured I'd come in now and... <laughs> I saw your I saw your, your little plug that said, bring us goodies, so... Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Well, you know everybody would in Sharon Springs. That's like, that's, that's how we roll. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, thank, thank you so much. Where's Bruce? What's Bruce doing? He's I'm working. working. Somebody has to go to work every day. I know. Well, you just bake quiche and, and yeah. be a nice host. I have to clean house. That takes a lot of work. <laughs> have you seen that house? I know. It's, it's huge and it's spotless. <laughs> so, yeah. No, but it, it's nice that I have the ability to stay home this time. So. Especially on days like this. On days like this, yeah. All right. Well, should we All see right. who this is? All right. Okay. Oh, I got to stay for that one. <laughs> oh, oh, do you do Susan. recognize the name? Susan. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you, Kelly? Good. Are you feeling better? I am starting to feel better, but I've gotten my uh, through the night watching you guys. <laughs> oh, my God. Did you really? Did you watch all night? Uh, I slept when you slept. Oh, okay. So not very much. <laughs> not very much at all. Why? Are you sick? It's okay. So you've gotten me through this. <laughs> What's the matter? You, what, you, you got the flu? I've got the flu and the stomach bug. I like to multitask. Oh my God! Well, it's a nice way to lose weight during the holidays. Well, you know, I was thinking that I'd like to get um at the thirty pound mark, so uh, it's good. Oh my God! All right, yeah. So you lose weight, and then you can just do cookies straight through to Christmas after you get. Yeah, uh, not good for the diabetic, but it's okay. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, okay. It, it's all right. Yeah. I I just wanted to say hi to Kelly, and it is the the greatest place to stay. Um, I heard. Uh, James just called, who we met up there, who was like five miles from us. He and his husband lived five miles from us, and we had never met them before. Oh, really? So we met in Sharon Springs. And did you meet at the New York house? 
at the New York House. And so you have, have you stayed there several times? Yeah, we stay there every time. We already have our reservations for Garden Party and for uh, Harvest Fest. Wow. I know. Are you booked for Garden Party? Uh, no, I still have two rooms. Okay, still two rooms for Garden Party. This is So if you want to come to Garden Party, and I know a lot of people were, were talking about it, um, what people don't realize is there aren't a lot of hotel rooms in Sharon Springs. There's there's the American, there's the New York House, there's Edgefield. That's pretty much that's it. And um, so well, the Spring House Spa has a room too. Now. Oh oh yes. Oh my gosh, I forgot about that. Spring House Spa. They have an apartment above the uh, above the spa, which you can rent on on a weekend. Mm -hmm. You can rent the room. Oh, that's great too. You can get the the apartment upstairs and then get a spa package down below. That's good. But still, that's like a total of. How many rooms in Sharon Springs? So like, you know, like mid 23, 24 rooms in Sharon Springs, and we have these festivals with thousands of people. So if you want to stay in Sharon Springs, you have to call uh, the New York House, the American, or Edgefield, or at Spring House Law, and you have to book a room now. You probably want, are you booked for Harvest Fest? I am booked for Harvest Fest. Everybody's booked for Harvest Fest. But get your name on a list. Do you take a list? Mm -hmm. Okay, take a wait list. So put your name on a wait list for Harvest Fest. Still get in two rooms left for Garden Party, and um, and yeah, you got you got to call ahead. Now we better get home. Everybody's got to call. I know. Oh yeah. Merry Christmas, cool. Susan. Merry Christmas, Kelly. Have you fun. and Bruce. Um, but I just want to say that you guys not only promote uh, by being in going to Sharon Springs, but we found so many other. Um, just providers of great food, like Mimi Muesli. Uh, we also discovered uh, during harvest uh, Saratoga peanut butter. Oh, we love them! We want oh my God, they are—they make the greatest products. But Mimi Muesli, I just placed an order the other day for another ten bags, so it kind of gets me through. Yeah. So it's not only just you with your products, but you also kind of make everybody knowledgeable about the other products that are out there in your community. Well, that's, I mean, and that's what we were saying about Sarah Springs. There are so many great people making great things here. I mean, and it's true. A lot of a lot of people watching this now, your community, you know, you've got nice things in community and you certainly need to explore them. But I swear there's something special about the productivity and the, and the quality of things that people are making in Schoharie County. And, and absolutely. And Linda was right. It is like it's a whole other community. We have made friends through... You know, I have so many friends that I have made, um, even your mom and dad. I mean, just, you know, they are the greatest people. We love uh, Jackie and Dave. My husband loves your dad, as you well know. Uh, I know you offer to give him to him. Um, <laughs> but we have made so many friends just through, it's our other family. We call it our Sharon Springs family. It is. It's a wonderful place. And you mentioned Lumu Muesli, and they are terrific. What's their website? I can't get I can't get online in front of me. Uh, it's I think it's Mew Mew Musely. Uh, it's M U M U M U S E L I, um, and they have a Facebook page. Okay, yeah. So look look up. Uh, if, are you on our Facebook page? I am actually away from the computer right now because I didn't want the feedback. Okay. Well, I'll just spell it again for people. Look up Mew Mew Musely. M U M U Musely. Which M U E S L I. I think, I think so. so. That's if it. If you Google it, it'll spell it right for you. Moo Moo Muesli and Sharon Springs, and they have amazing Muesli. And and uh, like you said, people order it by the case. By the case. And they also make great pancake mix. Oh my God. Yes. Yep. So every, everybody check that out. That's their local Sharon Springs. They're great. They they're wonderful for the community too. And listen, did you get to try actually try the uh, marshmallows I made you that I brought you to Anthropology in Philly? What do, you, what do you mean? Try them? They're gone. Oh, the hard cider ones. They didn't. Yeah, they didn't even. They didn't even make it home. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> they were amazing. The hard cider, and then earlier this year, you made us the beer marshmallow. I made uh, pumpkin uh, dogfish pumpkin ale, which is uh, dogfish is uh, a brewery good. here in Delaware, so we like to buy local. Um, and then I decided to try hard cider. Uh, I'm making a gingerbread uh, beer marshmallow and also a vanilla stout marshmallow. Oh, that all sounds really good. So, yeah. I'll, and we I'll really take, enjoyed I'll seeing you at Anthropology in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. It was just kind of a nice little uh, in-between thing of seeing you guys up there. So we yeah. really enjoyed it. It was great. Thank you for coming out. It's so, it's so fun to see everybody's faces when we tour, too, not just here. Well, and I want to say that 
you know, we came up, Harvest Festival is very special to our family this year because my daughter and her boyfriend were able to come up from Virginia. My brother, who introduced me to the show, who lives over in the Finger Lakes, was able to come over. And so we all met on Saturday in Sharon Springs, and they got to meet, everybody got to meet everyone. And it was like um, just a culmination of just everybody finally figuring out, okay, this place actually does exist, meeting the people, not being disappointed at anyone that they met, including Rosemary, who yeah. called me at 7 a.m. on Sunday saying, when are you going to leave? Because I'm going to bring you over cream puffs. I'm making making you cream puffs. I mean, that, and bringing amazing? them over to the New York house. Yeah, isn't that amazing? You come into town, Rosemary, who people saw last night, who brings food. She just You meet people, they call you, they bring you food. I mean, this, this is how we get you back. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's amazing, and it, like I said, it is our Sharon Springs family. You wow. know, so now I'm no longer. Uh, well, thank God, I'm now I'm the marshmallow person instead of the Polish pretzel person that Martha knew me as. So it's okay from your wedding. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Well, thank you very much. I, that's actually a funny joke. He said it must not be a real T-shirt; it would be gone by now, and it is on its way to being gone <laughs> by far. <laughs> Somebody, somebody well, on, on Sunday, I played my placed my third hundred over. On, I'm just a sucker for free shipping. So by Sunday, I placed my third order from uh, Thanksgiving. So um, uh, it was a a great incentive just to let you guys know to to buy lots of things and to give Beekman this Christmas. Oh, that's great. Thank you because we you know the free shipping is hard for us because you know I, as I explained earlier. You know, everybody everybody complains about the I almost said the B word. Uh, everybody complains about the shipping prices, but all small businesses face this challenge because Amazon and Targets and Macy's they all get they can offer free shipping because they negotiate these amazing deals with the post. post right, companies. and I heard my my friend uh, Dave uh, McCormick who owns Pro Kitchen Gear, yeah. um, who just lives two miles away from me, called this morning, yeah. and he has a fantastic business. Um, but yes, it hits him too, and that's why he's paired with with Amazon. So yeah, yeah I get it. But like, I ordered another case of um, mortgage lifter just to get us through the winter because it is the best. And my husband is Italian, and he doesn't eat just any, you know, just any sauce. But he will eat your sauce every day if I would feed it to him. It is. It is really good, and that's a good point. If you're if you want to hit that 150. Uh, Mark for the free shipping, but you you don't have enough gifts to buy. Just to get add on a case of the mortgage lifter, and um, it's good. That, that, you know, it's it's a premium. It's a premium grocery store. It's not cheap. You know, it's not ragu, but it's you know it's something you'll use all winter long, and it's it's delicious. Yeah. No, it's you don't want to eat ragu. You don't want to eat that. Oh, you want to yeah. eat something, and me who on, who are it was on my healthy kick. When you look at the ingredients that are in there. Read the ingredients, there, Kelly. There's no added sugar. There's no added. There's no. <laughs> added sugar. I hope he doesn't hand it to me. To I just it. tried to get Kelly. You know, the mortgage lifter, plum tomatoes, extra virgin olive oil, fresh garlic, fresh onion, fresh basil, salt, and spices. Do you see corn syrup on there, Kelly? Nothing artificial. No. This is good see, stuff. No chemicals. This is exactly like Kelly. It is good it. stuff. It is good. It is. And good. oh, it's gluten free. I, we didn't even put that on the label because I didn't put it on the label. But but it's gluten free. This well, if you read the ingredients, you would know that because there's nothing in there that's that would affect you. That is true. All right, well, thank you so much for calling. Listen, have a wonderful and blessed Christmas. Uh, Kelly, give my love to Bruce and to Stephanie and Travis, everyone. Um, thank you. And you guys have a wonderful, wonderful Christmas, and give my love to Josh. Thank and to you. Josh, to Brent, I'm sorry. Uh, we sure will. Thank you so much. All right. We'll talk soon. Bye. All right, she's so nice, isn't she nice? She in the is very nice. Oh, she's wonderful. All right, we have quiche. Let's go have quiche. <laughs> okay, we're gonna open the back doors for a minute so you can see what everybody's doing, and we're gonna we're gonna slice some quiche. Yeah. Okay. Um. Hi. I'm gonna be right back. I gotta blow my nose.
See, people are asking how's Faintly. Um, Faintly's doing well. Faintly is at a new farm. She's at Thorn Apple Acres Farm in Fort Plain, which isn't too far away. Um, she's with Laurel and Maya. So she is doing well. She has lots of her her sisters with her. Um, but I still do have Faintly's triplet sister, Fern, with me. So... That is where Faintly is. She's doing very well. Actually, Thorn Apple Acres has videos posted. And, um, so you would be able to see, see Faintly in, in some of the videos that, that she has posted on her, on her Facebook page. Hi, Matt Kovich. See all these other people. Uh, yes, Brett is off back to the farm. Just take a nap. Let's see who else. Good morning, Mullins. Oh, that's um, Chad and Dean. No, Aaron. Aaron and James. Okay. What do you do with that camera? I know. I, it like, goes opposite of what That's you do. That's why I've got camera. a mouse. Hey, it's Farmer John. Harrison Eddington, good morning. Funny how entertaining it is to watch a handful of people you've <laughs> never met discussing not much of anything. It's true. It's better than most everything else on TV. Hi there, it's Beekman. It's Josh and John. Hi. Hi, who's this? So, I'm calling from New Hampshire. Hi, what's your name? My name's Trisha. Hey, Trisha. And I met you guys at um, Stonewall Kitchen at the cooking class. Oh, wasn't that fun? It was so fun. And the setup there was beautiful. I, I had never been there before. It was really nice. Um, yeah, and they do those classes all the time. Yeah, I haven't been to one. You guys were my first one. My husband bought it for me as a gift. It was really exciting. I had a blast. I don't want and I actually have a question. I have a question about it. Okay. So um, I'm going to bring an appetizer for Christmas for my for my family's house, okay. and I'm trying to decide between the cauliflower apple soup or making the little butternut squash lasagna rolls. Yeah. And. Do you think soup would be too hard to do as an appetizer? Lots of would that be logistically a nightmare? What do you think? Um, I mean, soup can be fun if you if you can go to like the dollar store and you can get a bunch of um, little shot glasses. If you can get them, you know, like for 10, oh. ten cents a piece. Yeah. The trick of, the trick is getting it hot. So. Right. Should have taken crock pot. Yeah, you can take a crock pot with you. Oh, you know what would work? You know those, you know the turkey basters. So you can line yep. your you sure shot glasses up on a tray, and and sort of you know take the soup and fill each shot glass up like that, and then pass it. But that it's, is so cute. But it's that's still kind of that's it's still a tough appetizer. Um, what was the other one? The other one you guys made the um the lasagna rolls with the butternut squash in it, and you said that you could make them little and put toothpicks in them. Yep, um, they are delicious, but you probably need a fork for those. Yeah, they were really yummy at the at the at the event, so I I can't stop thinking about them. So I'm not sure. I have to decide. It's a small function, but we walk around. You know, it's pretty casual. So um, I just I just can't decide. So I thought I'd see what you thought. Those shot glasses is a cute idea, though. Yeah, I think the soup shooter, and then you can garnish each one too. Oh, I, I mean, unless people are vegetarian, it'd be great to garnish. Each one with a little bit of crumbled bacon. Oh yeah. Oh. That's and blue cheese. A little piece of a little crumbled blue cheese and a little crumbled bacon on top of that soup would be wonderful. Louis that Pernas. sounds crazy. Pernas. Pernas. Oh, that's true. Awesome. That's, that's a good idea that John had. A coffee, like put the soup in a hot coffee thermos, and then. Oh, to, to transport it there. Yeah, and then you can just pour it right into the shot glasses. 
That's a good idea. That would be easy too. Yeah. It'd be easy, easy to set up. Wow. Well, that sounds brilliant. Thank you so much for your help. Thank you. All right. We'll see you soon. Or see you later. Have a good Christmas. You too. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Bye. John's making fun of me because I misspelled my own name in the in the cookbook. Whoever gets that cookbook gets a special one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go serve yourself some quiche. All right. Let's see who else who's got some other comments here. You can give a call now if you want to give a call. 518-284. Six zero three nine. Why did that go away? Um, I just lost it. I lost it. Oh, here we go. Hi there, it's Josh. What's up? Hey, it's Sandy back in Seattle again. Good morning. Hi. Good morning to you. How's everything going? Oh, good. Well, so it's 8 a.m. here. I just got up, so I, I did wake up at 3, which would have been 6, and noticed you did finally go to sleep for a while. I did. From 4 to 6, I was asleep. 4 to 6.30. Oh, good. And and you weren't on the desk there. No, I did not sleep. <laughs> you know what? I, I didn't even make it home. I just went to, um, I went to Megan's house. Oh, that worked good. Yeah, and I just I crashed with that. I couldn't even I couldn't even drive up the street to home. At first, anybody who knows, it's five about five miles from the store to the to the farm. Yeah, and probably not plowed yet. They're plowed last, yesterday. Was it snowing yesterday? It's snowing constantly. It's snowing all the time. Oh, hey, oh I wish I was there all cozy. That sounds great. Um, hey, by, by the way, I have to also give Muesli, Moo Moo Muesli's pancake mix. That is the only pancake mix I can now eat. It is amazing. It is not normal. As a matter of fact, you should have them make a Beekman blend for you guys and oh, sell it. It's, oh, we would totally love to do something. I think they've got, they're they so busy on their own. I think we've even talked about it at one point, but I think I think they're swamped. But maybe, oh, good. Maybe we could go in them. on a... Um, hey, where are you actually sitting? I can't figure. I thought you're in that entryway oh, no, of the store, but is, you can't be. No, this is the the checkout desk. Uh, oh, okay. So you guys aren't open while you're wrapping today, uh, or? Oh uh, no, we are open, but it's Tuesday in you know in December. Oh, okay. Hi, John. It's Sandy, your your gardening intern. Oh, hi. Hi. Tell your dad I said hi and Merry Christmas. Okay, I will. Good. Well, I just wanted to say good morning because this is so cool. I can't believe I can do this. <laughs> uh, we should just have this live cam going all the time, right? Yeah, I would love it. I feel like, you know, you're right You're right here, so it's pretty cool, pretty I'm, fun. But I'm not going to sit here all the time. I can tell you that right now. No, as a matter of fact, I posted yesterday, last night. I was a little worried that you weren't up and walking around a little more. But uh, So get up and walk around a little bit. Today. Well, you think I'm going to get, or, like, there's not many places to walk in that much snow, is there? No, yeah, it's, it's hard to be active. Ask John. What's your what's your winter weight going to be this year, John? I'm already at my max. I hope. <laughs> oh <my laughs> now even this quiche isn't going to help. No, but so. John, aren't you? You're doing well. It's hard in the snow, but weren't you walking all the way around? I was walking around the property there for before that, all the snow comes. That's a like more than a mile. Well, how Probably. deep is the snow actually now on the farm? So, oh. We got a foot of snow. Oh, okay. That's well, the not hard thing too about, terrible. But the hard thing about walking in the snow on the farm is it's so open that the drifts. Get yeah, the drifts. Yeah, some of the drifts are probably over two feet high. Yeah. Oh, that's right. I bet Anders having fun. Yeah, yeah. She, a lot of times in the morning, around seven, seven thirty, when I'm out there, I hear her and I go out and I play with Anders for a little bit. Oh, good. How did? She, has she done okay now with her fence training and everything? And she's all. Did you see? Did you see her last night, Sandy? Yeah, you did. What's that? You saw Andre last night. Oh right? yeah, you you had them bring her out for me. Yeah, she's so beautiful. I think she went. She's with uh, Becca now, right? Good. Andre? Yeah, Becca's pretty awesome. I talked to her just a couple weeks ago. She called him just to say hi and let me know that Andre was sleeping in your kitchen, all cozy and warm. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's 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 too cold for outdoor. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, you guys have a great day today. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for calling. And, okay, bye-bye. Uh, thank you for everything. We'll talk soon. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Oh, Merry Christmas to you. Tell Brent hi, too, and uh, everybody there. I will. So, oh, I don't know. Um, yeah, so everybody that was asking about Brent earlier, so Brent is Brent went home, and now that we got the morning crew here, Brent went home. He's taken he'll probably sleep for a couple of hours, knowing Brent probably like half an hour, and uh, then he's gonna come back later. And uh, but yeah, so he's home, so he's not gonna go crazy. But I I just want to remind everybody, it's been a while. The reason we're doing this is because today is the busiest shipping day of the year because this is the last chance for anybody on the west coast or actually west of the Mississippi this is the last chance for you to order today and have your your gifts safely um, be uh, received by Christmas in fact East Coast I would order today too because the weather's crappy and it's going to delay service okay who's this hey John hello, hello. hey is this hello. hi who's this this is Maureen is this Josh it's Josh and John Oh, I'm so happy to speak to both of you. You're wonderful, and I'm very, very pleased to have this opportunity. Oh, well, thanks. Have you been watching? <laughs> I just need to ask you a question. Sure. My sister loves, and I love both of you. Is Brent still alive, or did somebody kill him? <laughs> no, I haven't done that yet. <laughs> but he's, he's uh, is he just disappeared, or... You're not allowing him to play? Is he brutal? Not oh. allowed to play in any reindeer games? Oh, well, did you watch last night at all? No, I really didn't call to talk to him. I just was curious if he just disappeared. Oh, but no. what I really need to know is, is there any way to buy any of John's scarves? There, in in uh, January, there will be. In January, okay, because I was trying to sneak one in before Christmas for my sister, but she can have it in January and she'll be very happy. Well, do you want to sell the but, one that you got? I'm <laughs> sorry. What, John? You have one one barley and one one wheat, but somebody wanted the barley. Yep. Suzanne wanted the barley. So John's got I, one, I, one wheat one. You can buy it right from him. Okay, I will do it. I absolutely will do it. I I can't do it now though, right? Can I pre-order it? Um. So why don't you email? On Facebook, can you do Facebook? Do you, uh, are you on Facebook? I, I, I'm, I'm actually one of you, uh, I just got a letter from you asking for me to order so I could get a free cheese. So I'm actually a very good customer of your mercantile. So can I just send a note quickly to your place and ask them to uh, keep me in mind and email me when the scarves are available? Oh. And I'm in, I'm be, I am also on Facebook with you. Here, you know what? I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you to John and John will give you John will talk to you in back and he'll get your address and you can work then you can then you can work it out directly. Okay, thank you very much, Josh, and Merry Merry Christmas. Thank you, I'm gonna put you on hold for one second. Thank you. Look at that, making sales right over the phone for John. So the two scarves that he has made are already sold, but but don't worry, he's making more, and we are going to have them uh, in July or in July in January. We didn't want to we didn't want to launch them at Christmas time because uh, we didn't want them to get lost with all the other holiday items. So in January, you can get a real Farmer John barn scarf. I didn't show. We'll show them again. For people who didn't see them earlier, during the winter when John, uh, when we're not milking the goats, John has extra free time, so he crochets and he crochets beautiful things. And one of the things he makes are these scarves, and they're called Farmer John barn scarves because they have one end is a barn red uh, stripe just on the end of it. And the reason that is is because we love the natural colors. All of us love the natural colors, but in the barn. 
or in the snow or on the ground, if your scarf falls off, you can't see your scarf. So he does, he, he does it in his favorite color, and then on the end, he puts a little bit of red so he can spot it if it falls off in the barn or in the, on the ground. And so he's going to do two colors for us, one barley and one wheat. So the barley is the lighter and the wheat the darker, and we're going to have those in the store in January. But there's not going to be very many because the goats come in February, and since John is knitting them by hand, uh, you know, he, after the goats start coming, he can't make them anymore. So whatever he can make between January and February are going to be up on the website. So let's see. I have your ginger creamed honey, David Kramer. What is your favorite way to use it? Um, the ginger, ginger creamed honey. Let's see, ginger creamed honey, it's good in iced tea, it's good in regular tea. Most of the honeys are. Uh, it's also great if you mix the ginger, mix the honey, make sure it's warm and melty, and mix it with soy sauce and brush it on fish or chicken. Amazing. Uh, if you do like a, a, a fried chicken pieces, you know, like a General Chow's chicken, like with a ginger honey glaze, that's that's awesome. And you and even on pork, a pork roast with, with a ginger honey is good. Did you make a sale, John? Yeah. John, a traveling salesman. All right, anybody can call right now. The number five one eight. Two eight four six zero three nine. We're still here. I'm wondering how long this feed is going to go. Well, the feeds here are only four hours, and then we got to start a new one. But we probably got a few minutes left. Gene P. Any chance for another goat cam this spring? Hey John, how do you feel about a goat cam? The same way I felt about when it was there. And most people know how I felt about it. So John did not like the goat cam. That said, he was a good sport about it. The reason that we don't have goat cam anymore is because it was Discovery's goat cam, and so they put it in, they took it out. But John was a good sport because, I mean, wouldn't you hate having a camera on you all day while you worked? So John did. So John had to stop swearing and and sing, yeah. singing show tunes. Yeah. And I mean, it, it, it's kind of tough, um, you know, if anything really bad happened. Like, it's not something that I really want people to see and yeah so and then you wear you wear the thongs when it gets really hot yeah yeah that's right all right hi there it's Josh and John hi Josh and John how are you this hi. is Helen in Georgia who is it this is Helen hi Helen Hancock in Georgia and uh, I've been sitting watching you most of the night and then this morning and uh, so I thought well I got a call because I did get to meet you at Stone Mountain and uh, you're just gracious gracious people well thank uh, you thanks for calling thanks for watching well um, I wanted to tell you um, after you were talking about the black drizzle last night I did go and uh, find some coffee ice cream in the freezer and I tried it on coffee ice cream and it was really yummy mm. and um, Anyway, so I just wanted to call and wish you a Merry Christmas and see if you ever got a hold of Charo. We did not. In fact, I haven't brought that up. Um, anybody out there, I'm, I'm, I'm almost giving up hope because it's the, you know, time is ticking. It's 11.15. That's only six hours and 45 minutes left to go. My goal starting this was I wanted Charo to call in because when I was growing up, she was on every holiday special, every, you know, Yep. Every Christmas, everything, it was like all of a sudden it'd be like a knock on the door and there was Charo. Well, there is this, Charo.com is supposedly her official website and it says she's in a Las Vegas show in the Riviera Hotel. So I don't know, maybe she's not in California, maybe she's working and so now she's sleeping. Well, could, maybe somebody could, somebody call, what is it, the Riviera Hotel? Uh-huh, and, and the Riviera Hotel, Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. Okay, I am promising free goat milk soap for a year <laughs> to whoever can get Charo on the phone. Okay, well that 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 sounds like a lofty goal, but um a fun one to try and achieve. I, yes, it, it, what there's two <laughs> look at there's there's two hundred and thirty people watching right now. Yeah, that's you know, one of you, I'm telling you, one of you knows Charo's uh, hair weaver. 
or, Ch or Charles costume safety pinner. Some of you, well, somebody out there knows somebody who knows somebody who knows Charles, and you need to start making those calls because there's only six hours and forty five minutes left for Charles to call. Right? Are you with me? Yeah. Yeah. All right, Team Charles. Yeah. We'll have to give that a shot. Now that now that hotel's going to get two hundred three four phone calls. I know. What is it? The Riviera Hotel. Riviera Hotel and Casino. I would just, yeah, ask for Charles. She probably uses a fake name. Yeah. Probably Coochie. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have a wonderful, wonderful holiday. I, we really enjoyed meeting you. Well, you too. Thank you for calling. All right. We'll see ya. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, can't even reach anymore. Can you reach? <laughs> All right. What, okay. So what else do we have? What are your favorite recipes for the spice samplers? Um, Princess Poopa Latte, do you? Okay, the spice samplers we have. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna hold those up. The recipes are all in the kits. They're not the recipes, but the uses are in the kits. So um, let me see. Does somebody? Hey, Megs. Well, maybe she's there. Hang on. I gotta hang. We're gonna lose our charge on our phone. Hey, Ron. Hey, good morning, Josh. Good morning to you. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Good morning, John. Good morning. I, uh, I'm watching you guys most of the night, so I wanted to call and say good morning, and it looks like uh, you're having a lot of fun there. How are we looking? It's still looking fresh, right? Shut up, John. But, uh, <laughs> you were what? How do I look? Oh, you're, yeah, you're looking great. That's what I wanted to hear. <laughs> oh, right, John, John, you've been standing up all the whole time you've been there. What? You've been standing up the whole time you've been there. You need to take uh, Josh's seat for a little bit. Yeah. Well, I'll sit down most of the rest of the day, so I don't mind standing. Yeah. Well, usually from February to October, I'm on my feet for 12, 16 hours a day anyway. So, practice. Yeah. Well, you guys are keeping busy. That's a good thing. Yeah, yeah, they're they're working away in the back there. <laughs> yeah, I see that. They got away. Hey. Uh, you got all the snow plowed away? Yeah, all the snow's plowed away. Yeah, you got you got quite a bit there. Yeah, we got at least Little. a foot, and it's still snowing now. We're supposed to get another couple inches today, I guess. Wow. A little different from California here. A little different. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're uh, we're we're good for about sixty five degrees today, so I shouldn't rub it in. Yeah. It's a little sixty five is a little cold, isn't it? Uh well, yeah, we're we're used to seventy, so hey, sixty five is a cold cold degree for us. When are you coming back, Ron? Oh, I'll be back probably in January. Oh, I've good. got to uh, cut a look at some more property. Did you find anything else new? Yeah, I'm looking at some things. Uh, John's been helping me, so I'm sending him a video camera to do some videotaping for me. So got a couple of things we're uh, narrowing down on, so that's a good thing. Um, I was going to say, do you want to share any of them, but you don't want to share any, any real estate because then... Somebody else will find it. Snap it up. <laughs> well, there's some interesting things. I think for me, I, I want something that's got some good visibility to the highway. So I've been looking at uh, some properties there, and uh, like I said, John's been great helping me out and uh, keeping a watch for me when something comes along. So uh, hopefully by spring we'll find something and be moving out there. Yeah. Not too much right on the main highways. Anymore, so everything's usually off the beaten path, which is kind of how Sharon Springs is. So, yeah, well, that's what I'm finding. But anyway, it's a great community. I had a I had a great time when I was there, uh, and looking forward to coming back. I've got to make sure I'm there by the by the spring festival, so the garden party. You want to you want to be in by the garden party? 
I do, but I don't know if I'll make it by then. But what is that? It's May, isn't it? Um, first and second again? No, no, I think it's uh, well Memorial Day, right? Isn't it Memorial Day weekend? Is it? I thought it was the weekend after. I don't know. Well, I'll definitely be there for for the festival, but whether I'll be uh, be moved in there by then, I don't know. But anyway, I'm really looking forward to it. Well, we're looking forward to having you here, but you're going to be a huge addition uh, to the community. Well, I think there's, uh, I mean, there's just great people. I think that's one thing about Sharon Springs that I was the most impressed with is just how warm and welcoming everybody is and... Uh, you know, I've gotten to know so many people in just the short time that I've been there, but just everybody is so welcoming and, and have been just uh, just great. So I'm really looking forward to it. Um, it is an awesome place. Uh, and and with that, I mean, over the last day or so, we've had so many people call and, and just talk about what a great time they had here. And um, it's, I mean, we... It, Sharon Springs wouldn't exist anymore if it weren't for people coming to visit and, you know, and, and the tourism the tourism money that people bring in and share. I mean, that's that's it's really a big part of this community. Well, for me, I think it's going to be a great, a great uh, opportunity to open a business there because uh, it's really becoming a, a great tourist attraction and people are, are coming from all over. And, um, yeah, people I mean, from people... New York City and uh, it just is really... I'm, I'm excited about it because um, I think the community has been very welcoming from that standpoint, but um, I, I think it'll be a great place for a new business. Yeah, that should be that should be our town motto, business plans welcome. That's I mean, that's the one thing that we really need in Sharon Springs. Well, we need a lot of things in Sharon Springs, but one of the main things we need in Sharon Springs, we have great people, we have great talent, we have hard workers, we have people who want to work. Um, we need people with good business plans to come in. We have people, we have tourism, we have people that want to come here, we just need good business, we need some, some more great places to shop, we have great places, but we need more great places, um, and, uh, and, and some businesses, more places for people to work, yeah. and activities, we need activities. Places for people to stay. Yeah, yeah and we need more rooms. Uh, well, that's the one thing that, uh, that I've been looking at with, with what I'm, I'm doing, because there's a uh, great opportunity for more festivals, more activities, and uh, that's the kind of thing I'm looking to do when I, uh, it's part of my business that, uh, that I bring in. So yeah. uh, I've had some opportunities to look at, you know, going to Vermont and other places, but I've really settled in on Sharon Springs because I just think there's, there's tremendous uh, potential there. Um, yeah, it's, it, that's, that's what Brent always says about Sharon Springs. It's like you walk down the street and there's just, it's potential. We, we are potential. There's like, there's so many buildings that are for sale that are inexpensive and, and uh, you know, you can redo them. It's just, every building is full of potential. I got to do one thing. Yeah, that's what I found. I think that, uh, and it's, there's, there's so many, uh, I mean, it's such a great historic town. And I think as you continue to uh, restore it and uh, and can add new businesses, I think it's just going to uh, bring more people. So you guys have been doing a great job, and I think with the uh, with the amount of tourism that is has already uh, you know you've already brought to Sharon Springs, it's just going to continue to grow. So that was really my deciding factor on wanting to move there. Well, so John, you know the one thing we don't have. We don't have Charles. Okay. No Charles. There's no Charles. Ron, you must know somebody that knows Charles. You know, I know a lot of entertainment people uh, being in the entertainment business for so long, but, you know, I don't know Charles. Uh, hey, you know, she was just on, um, not too long ago, she was on the Lance Bass show, so, uh, you know, I might be able to get a hold of Lance and see if he knows how to get a hold of her. Oh, hey, that's good enough. We'll take that. Yeah, he was on. She was on Dirty Pop, and he was at a party at her house. So she just released the new CD, and so um, I think she had a CD release party, and Lance was there, and then she was. Uh, I think she was on his uh, his Dirty Pop, um, yeah. Serious XM show. We did Lance's show too. That's a good idea. Maybe I'll look up and see if I have any contacts there. Yeah, I mean, Lance Paul. He definitely knows how to 
get a hold of her because uh, she was, uh, I don't know, it was probably a month ago that she was on. So um, that might be a contact for you. I think we're getting closer. All right, we're yeah. one step closer yeah. to Charles. Hey, what did you think about John dressing up for the uh, Victorian Festival? He looked pretty sharp, didn't he? I thought it did look good. Did I, people can check out the photos on uh, bpn1802.com. I forget the post. We, we treated all the, did you see the photos where we made them look old, all the photos look old? I did. I posted the two, the one of John and I together. Uh, I reposted your uh, post that you took, the picture of us. Oh, great. Right. So, that, that was great, and uh, yeah, it took took a little arm twist to get him to do it, but but he did it. Yeah, yeah, he still looks like <laughs> he, he looks like he's gonna hold a grudge against you on that one. Yeah. <laughs> well, I even had to ship him the costume, and then when I shipped it to him, it was like, uh oh, this isn't gonna work. So thank goodness Maria came to the rescue. We borrowed Pete's coat, so so he had something to wear. Oh, well, it looks great. I thought it looked great. Looks yeah. 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 So. John Don't Lee. worry, John. I've still got it packed in the box, so I'll, I'm all ready to ship it back to you next year. Oh, oh okay. but you you already have the hat. You kept the hat. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, he's been wearing it in the barn. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I bet the ghosts really appreciate it. Uh, it's Focus Spot that doesn't like it either, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Ron. Well, I just well, I just wanted to call and say hi to you guys and. Uh, and it looks like you're off to a, a great day again today. I think it is. I think it's going to be a good day. I hear a lot of packing tape back there, so that means people are moving boxes. Well, that's a good thing. So. All right. Well, I got to head out to work, so I just wanted to say hi, and uh, we'll talk to you again soon. All right. Thanks, Ron. Talk later. Right. Bye. Bye. All right. Bye. We got disconnected. Brian's going to come try to connect it. Uh, well, then while that's disconnected, I think I'm going to head out. All right, everybody. John's leaving. Merry Christmas, everybody. You know Rosemary's coming with food. All right, no, I just had that. I, I guess I gotta go back and check on the boats again. All right, okay. Just a couple of hours. All righty. Thanks, John, for coming by. Take, take some, take some of the pressure off. He's a good host. I think I totally. Yeah. I think well, let's go on some obscure cable show for and do the morning news. You yeah. can do the farm report. I'll do the celebrity gossip. I don't know any celebrities. Oh, somebody got it. Okay, we'll be right back. We're heading back. Hi there, I hear you have some Charo information. Hi, it's Tracy from last night in Iowa. Oh hey, did you get through to Charo? She's staying at the Hotel Riviera in Las Vegas. I called there and um, you know how us charming Midwesterners can be. And I got a hold of the, the lady, um, the event coordinator. Uh, her name is Charlene Corvina, and I have her phone number. Oh, well, I, we can't give it over the air, can we? Uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe you should step in the back really quick. Oh yeah. Oh, that's that's a good idea. Hang on. I'm, one second. We'll be right back. Oh, that's awesome. All right, I'm putting you back on speaker now that we don't have the, the number again. Okay, so we have the beginnings of a lead on Charo. We do. We do. 
we, we, have, so we, we have the beginnings of we have the beginnings of the leap. So um, yeah, six degrees of separation from Iowa. I believe that I have a contact in Las Vegas that can get her through. So okay, uh, fingers crossed. So, so I would I would put somebody on that phone number and have them you know keep trying to call and wait for her to come in. They said it's a bit early for her in Vegas to be there, but maybe we can make this happen before you guys are off the air. Well, we, yeah, we've got we've got uh, six and a half hours left. So let's see, it's Vegas. What time is it in Vegas? Is that Mountain or Western? Um, I'm in Central, so it's 9:35 there. Okay, 9:35. I'll wait till 10:35, yeah. and then I'll I'll call Charlene. Okay, that sounds great. Good luck. You know, if you give us Midwesterners a job, maybe we get it done. You will get it done. I know. I'm a Midwesterner too. That's why I know that yeah. I can get Charles on on air. I'm sure between Wisconsin and Iowa, you and I are related somehow. Uh, probably, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> probably, we're 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 cousins somewhere. So exactly. I'll be watching today, and hopefully, we can get some coochie coochie on there and some uh, Merry Christmas wishes. So. Oh, oh, you know what? And she doesn't she have an album to push? She does. She does have a new album out. So, um, I yeah, hopefully she'll. She'll put that information out there for everybody because I know, as you know, she's a great guitarist um, and yeah, fabulous entertainer. So uh, yeah, she, maybe it'll be a chance for her to let us know what she's got coming out. She's an, she is uh, one of the best classical guitarists in the world. People don't know that. I know. And I do have one connection to Jay Leno, but I think she was always on Johnny Carson before Jay Leno um, came on. So I'm not sure that that would be the the best the best lead. Yeah, I don't know. So, yeah, no, I like. I we, think we know where she's sleeping. Think, that's that's the key. We know she's sleeping at the Riviera Hotel in Las Vegas. So that's that's the first step. That's where she is, and we have the event coordinator there. You know, hopefully, yep. you know, hope maybe maybe Char will be coming in for a little afternoon meeting today. Take two seconds on the phone. If anybody if anybody knows anyone at the uh, is it Riviera? Yeah, Riviera Hotel. If anybody knows anybody at the Riviera Hotel. Yeah, so if anybody's out there and in the area at the Riviera Hotel, um, you know, sees her around, they could maybe help us out with this and make it happen for Christmas. Yeah, you know, whatever, it's, a, it's that war strategy of, like, going at both sides. So we know she's at the Riviera. I'll go for Charlene. Somebody else go for somebody else at the Riviera. And we'll, we'll pin Char, we'll pin that Charo down. All right. Sounds good. All right. Thank you so much. All right, you're looking good. Uh, Hang in there. I'm, I'm, I'm doing my best. <laughs> <laughs> bye from Iowa. All right, bye. Thank you. Uh huh. Um. Oh, hi, hi. Look at it's sunny. How are you? Oh, you probably go go through around the back way. Are you all right? It was hard to get her up here. <laughs> oh <laughs> no. Oh, we have we have another special guest. She's coming through around the back. I think you're gonna love to put a. I think you're gonna love to put a, a face with with these products. You guys know um, you you uh, you bought a ton of the things that she's made. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna get to meet Sunny. <laughs> Hang on, Sunny's coming. Oh, come on. All right, everybody. Hello. This is Sunny. Now, um, this is Sunny Linehart. Now, uh, Sunny has, how long have you been making stuff for us? I mean, not, not you've been well, making stuff forever, but for us. You, three years. Three years. Third Christmas. Okay. So Sunny is it? first of all, well, thank you. Look at this. What is this? This is a Portuguese almond cake. Oh. Oh my God, that's so great. Yeah. Uh, and Maria and Megan loved this last year. What's What's the inside? It's a cake. So it's a cake. Is it with ground almonds at the? No. 
Like, is there almond extract in it? Yeah. Oh my god, I love almond flavor. Yeah, you're gonna love this. Oh my god, it smells so good. The toasted almonds. Um, hang on. Stay here. I want to show some of your stuff. Oh, the roads. The roads are, the roads are horrible. Oh. Oh well, thank you. You didn't have to come, but thank you for coming. Almost out of stuff, huh? I know. Oh, my kiln was too time load this morning. Oh really? Well, there'll be more We're coming. We're working soon. away. We are definitely working away, getting it done. Okay, so Sunny. Oh my God, this is so amazing. First of all, thank you. And then this, this is Sharon Springs. You just go, you just do a Google Live hangout, and people show up with food. Did you see Rosemary came and Kelly came, and we're so grateful because these guys have been working like 18, 19 hour days. I can believe it's it. insane. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm torn because I want to bring it back there, but I want to keep it up here. Yeah, yeah. It won't, it won't stick around very long. I'm gonna start it. I'm gonna start with it up here. Okay, so Sunny is one is an incredible potter. Is that what you would call it? Potter. Okay, is there a better word for it? Okay, <laughs> incredible potter, and um, she makes many many wonderful things. But sort of the thing that she's been known for at Beekman is the gunmetal glaze and her her bowls. And there's one more item I want to bring out. The pears. The pears. Is that what we started with? Yeah, I think you're almost sold out of them. The tops. Oh. oh. Oh, you have one left. Oh yeah. my goodness. Does that one not have a top? <laughs> and that one probably doesn't have a top. Yeah. Okay. So this is what we started with. Um, and it is a pear vase. I'm just gonna I'm not gonna take the tape off. So it's a it's a vase and describe this glaze. We call it a gunmetal glaze. Yeah, it's like a matte, um, pewter like almost. It it almost looks like cast iron. It does. It looks like a piece of cast yeah, iron. Everybody thinks that it's metal and not clay. Yeah, so. it's nothing you've ever seen in pottery before. Um, did you, were you doing it before us, or did you kind of develop it at working with us? No, no, I had this glaze for a long time, but uh, it just seems to work well with this clay body and uh, my kiln. So and and our colors. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, when I first started making uh, things for you, I had brought you over a green pair. Yes. And you said, can you make it in black? And oh, I didn't say that. Did I say that? Brent said Brent that. Said it. And I said, sure. But so I start making them in black. But it's true. They're all it's so organic. They're so pear. And then you see the lid. I, it's taped on here now because I want to break it. But normally the, the lid comes all the way off. Um, the lid comes off. And you use it as a bud base. It's just so pretty when you set the lid off to the side. It's the top of the pear. Yeah. It's, it should it's have a just piece stunning. of holly coming out of it. Right? Oh, it totally does. It totally needs a it needs holly. A little something. Um, right. And then it's great like with one or two tulips coming out. It's yeah. seasonal. You can. Yeah. The thing, the thing I love is so you've got the thing, but I just love the top when you put the top of it sitting next to it. It's just so delicate. It's, it's really like a little beautiful. puzzle. You know? It is. It fits perfect. And and. And as we know, because we've broken several of the tops yeah, by mistake, the top only goes with, I mean, it's hand cut out of the, 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 the pot, so it only matches the pair it was born with. Okay, this was our Little Liza series. When did you start doing this? With you guys. And then there's a video. We did. It, we put together mm -hmm. a video of you making these. Yep. Um, so you can see this, I think, on the product page. Don't, isn't the video embedded? If you go to the store... Shop uh, shop.beekman1802.com and you look for the little Liza bowls. You'll see the video of of uh, Sunny making these. And tell people how you make these. Well, they're hand thrown on a potter's wheel. So you make the bowl first. Mm -hmm. And then when it's at a certain dryness, um, it's still be it's called leather hard. Um, I use different tools to cut out all the different size holes, and then it has to dry. Then I have to clean them all up, you know, so that it's so not messy. Yeah. yeah. And then you bisque fire it. You fire it once, and then you have to glaze it, and you fire it a second time. So it's a process. Of, you know, it's not like making candy where you make it and, and you're done. <laughs> you're no, done. It, it's, it it's a phased process. process. Let me see. Okay, can you tell Megan there's uh, someone, there's a, some customers over here? Oh, I think she might have found it. Um, so and kind of what I like about this, okay, the bowl is so decorative. It's really, it's really lovely on its own. But one of the things I like about it is it's a great fruit bowl. Um, That's great with the green pears. The green pears, green apples, and and, and because the holes are in it, 
unlike a lot of bowls, because the holes are in it. Oh yeah, you've seen the shot that happened with the tomatoes. I love that. Uh, because the holes are in it, it allows the air to go through, so you don't have the rotten apples or the rotten things on the bottom. So it's it's beautiful, but it's just beautiful on its own. And then we there's the miniature version of it, yeah. the little Liza bowl. Did you do you like the, do you put the candles in these? Sometimes, or well, you could use them for nuts. You know, the holes are small enough that you could use them for any uh, number of things. You know? That's true. You could do you could do mixed nuts. Yeah, potpourri type of thing. Yeah. Maybe, you know, Some, yeah, a large potpourri that wouldn't go through the hole, but the holes would allow the air to circulate. Um, but the can I think the candle is amazing. When you put a little tea light candle in this, can you see the holes? I'm trying to show where you can see the holes. Um, Hello. Where you see the holes, uh, if you put the candle in, it casts a glow on the surface of the table around it of these little polka dots. It's it's really beautiful. I think there's a if you go in my little Liza bowl, there's a picture of that as well on the on the product page. And then our fallen leaves. How many of these have you made? Oh, hundreds. <laughs> hundreds. Yeah. But, uh, Tell how you make these. Uh, well, I used originally a real leaf to make a, um, a mold, a cast, uh, and uh, I have to roll the clay really thin. Like it is thin. It's like crepe. Yes, yeah, like fingernail thin. Yeah. And then I, I clip each and every one um, on this mold to get the impressions. And then uh, they also have to be bisp, and then they have to be glazed a uh, second time, you know, two firings. But uh, they also, when I make it, I have to uh, individually, you know, shape the little little uh, stem and kind of give it character by, you know, uh, bending it around yeah. so that it looks like a real leaf. And they're all individual. And people have come up with great ideas for this. I know. Uh, the use of tea bags, Yeah, the tea bags. Rings. Chopsticks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh, like they, if you buy your sink, you know. The ring. Oh, yeah, the ring by your sink. Um, um, you could put like um, a dollop of wasabi or something. I was gonna know? say like an amuse bouche. Mm -hmm. Like if you're having a dinner party for the first course, you put a tiny, you know, like a tiny little scallop thingy, you know, on the plates to start with. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just absolutely stunning. Have we talked about doing these in color? Do people do them in color? I'm not sure. <laughs> you don't want to do work. <laughs> <laughs> Sunny hates that we're selling these right now because now she's got to go and make more. <laughs> but uh, I had one lady um, uh, decided to give a pair of homemade uh, earrings. They were very beautiful earrings. Oh yeah. She put the earrings in, in. one of each in these. Oh, and that's like beautiful. Display, you know? So I mean, they look really pretty the way that they were arranged from the, these little leaves. So. A number of different things. Well, if you would stop yeah. making such great stuff, <laughs> at, like this is a crazy cheap price. What do you? Th these are twelve bucks. Yeah, Sunny, I know. We're gonna raise our. <laughs> are we gonna raise the price on these or what? This is too cheap. I don't know. The bowls are the hardest. These are. Cheap. This is the hardest because it, it, it's so much little tiny. How much are those? Yeah. How much are those? <laughs> Twenty. No, these are twenty. These are 20. No. No, these are eighteen. Yeah, that's Sunny, why, why don't you raise your prices? Yeah. We'll discuss it. <laughs> but um, these are all hand thrown off of the hump. You know, I use a large piece of clay and I just throw them off. And I have these um, tools and technique that I use to make them all exactly the same size. Oh, they are. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Yep. I have tools for the the width and the height. And uh, then after they're leather hard, I once again have to go back and I have to trim them with another little tool so that you know they have a nice little foot. Yeah, they have a wonderful yeah. base and it's, they're so narrow and delicate at the bottom. You would think that they would roll around, but but no. you you engineered it. Perfectly, perfectly. Yeah. yeah. So these, these are uh, oh, crazy cheap. And they get a little goat in them. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. That's the best part. Though they have the little goat in the bottom. <laughs> so. And there's, I mean, they're eighteen dollars a piece. People buy like eight at a time. Well, you know what? People that's like to. Well, first of all, they're all homemade. They're all handmade. Yep. Yeah. And there's a little something, uh, an essence that's carried through. You know the person who makes it into every, each and every bowl. Yeah. But uh, with the goat, people remember where they bought it. You That's know? true. And every time they use it, they'll say, "Oh yeah, oh yeah." The That's goat. a little Beekman goat. The Beekman. Yeah. yeah. So this has been a real hot number. That has been. And this is a nice size because it's not too big, not too small. Right. You could use this for just 
all kinds of stuff. And is this dishwasher safe? Oh, yes. Totally dishwasher safe. Yes. You know what this is nice for? Because here's the thing. We all have bowls at home, soup bowls, and then you you know, you know, have them for breakfast, and they're this huge, gigantic, and you, and you wind up eating like twice as much yogurt or twice as much anything as you want. This is a, is a perfect size yogurt bowl for the morning. That is true. Um, portion control. <laughs> <laughs> Portion control is name. Okay, I want to show one more product that you make because I don't think people understand how great it is. I make more? <laughs> well, you make this one. Oh, oh you need a change. Can you give me 15, 20 out of the register? Sure, we're, we're being wrong.